Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed and now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome in to the Penny Bloom Podcast. It is I, Colton Robertson, and I am joined by Joseph George. What's up, homie? Oh, what up, what up? Always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it is always a pleasure to have you. We are at the end of yet another year. 2022 is behind us. And we look forward to 2023. But on this podcast, every every new year that comes around, we take a look back at all the shit we watched that was brand new in the year and in, in whatever year just happened. And 2022 was a big one, especially for me. I finally got into a state of mind where I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch as much new shit as I possibly can, movies and television and uh and it paid off in a big way for me. I had a very fun content viewing year. Uh how about you? How are you feeling about your year viewing wise? I feel you know, I, I was thinking I, I thought I was a very stereotypical viewer this year. I feel I, I only went out to the theater when it was a very, you know, MCU movie. Obviously I'm going to go see on release date. Um and the DC movies that came out this year as well. Um, Batman went out immediately, and, and I guess Black Adam would be the only other one um, DC-wise. So, uh, you know, those movies I went to go see. Um, but then if it, I don't know, I guess the only other movie I went to go see in theaters that wasn't Marvel or DC um, was only, yeah, Top Gun Maverick. So, like, and that's not, you know, that's like... Which, funny enough, is not one I saw. <laughs> so you so, will uh yeah. you'll you'll have a, you'll have some good input on some things I did not see that you did and including Morbius and Top Gun I'm assuming. So yeah, um, a, lot, a lot of my list is dominated by the MCU and, and superhero ish, you know, the category of that. Yeah, yeah for but, sure. Um, for sure. Yeah, the first but, time I made it out to the theater this year was on February 20th. I kept I kept track this year. Every movie I watched on the day I watched it, I took it down in a notebook. Awesome. And February 20th, I made it out to the theater to watch Tom Holland in the PS PlayStation spinoff <laughs> movie, Uncharted, which does not right. rank super high amongst my stuff. I saw the Batman in the theaters five times. Uh saw it a lot. I saw everything everywhere all at once in theater. I saw the unbearable weight of massive talent in the theater. I saw the Northman in the theater the next mm-hmm. day. Um, okay. Multiverse of Madness in theater. The Bob's Burgers movie in theater. Nice. Minions Rise of Gru in theater. That's a Elvis, big one. Elvis in theater. Mm. Thor Love and Thunder in theater. Pause of Fury, The Legend of Hank in theater. I had AMC A list this summer, so I went big. Um, That's big. That is pretty yeah. big. Marcel the Shell with shoes on in theater. Ooh. Nope. In theater. DC's League of Super Pets in theater. Bullet Train in theater. And I believe the last movie I saw in theater this year was Beast, starring Idris Elba. I don't think I saw another movie in theater after that. That is a lie. Wakanda Forever came out after that, and I saw mm-hmm. that. Okay. okay, so that that was it. But uh, plenty of movies I caught in theater this year, and uh, strongly wow. recommend if you get to, like the summer is a perfect time to sign up for a membership like that because new movies are coming all the time. Especially next summer will be a good one with Oppenheimer and Barbie and all the goodies coming next next year. Mm. So uh, you go to like okay. two movies and you've paid for the membership. Um, that will be very clutch in the summer. Yeah, that that. I feel like that's just uh, something I'm going to have to do because that is the one thing I wish I would have done more this year is is go to the theater, um, specifically not for Marvel movies um, mm-hmm. because th- those are the ones that I know I'm going to watch no matter what. Even if the movie is absolutely terrible, I'm going out to You're watch it. Like, 
Um, and it's really like I'll buy the ticket. It'll either be the first showing that I possibly can or one very shortly after. Hmm. Um, but yeah, that's, um, I don't know. The first movie I saw in theaters this year was Batman. And, cool. um, that did not and that, I'm glad that that was my first movie that I saw in theaters. Um, because that is the best movie I saw in theaters this year. Um, without a doubt. Hmm. Um, I think, Hard let's see. Batman would be the first. That was one um, we managed to catch together at some point, if I remember yes. correctly. Also. Yeah, I saw it five times in theater, so I did see it quite a lot in theater. Let's see. I guess um, I'll rank them in release order. I did not watch everything everywhere all at once in theater. I, that was one I wish I did. Um, but the only other one would be... Yeah. Oh, I guess Secrets of Dumbledore outside of Oh, um, you saw that Marvel. in theater? Yeah. Uh, we got a good variety here again. because I got yeah. a lot of movies on my list, and already I know there's a few that I did not see that you did. So I'm okay. excited to talk about it. There we um, go. How many movies total from the year did you watch? Do specials count? Yes, I am counting specials. Okay. So I got only shows. I'm also going to ask shows separately, so if you want to go ahead and throw that number up there, too. 13 movies. Um, 13 movies total, so that would just make um, five shows total for All me. All right. Then I think I'm also going to ask for a top five shows. We're going to go into a top yeah. ten movies. Uh, we're going to go into detail there, but we're also going to do a top five shows from the year. And I'm very excited to do so, and I think that's probably a better place to start uh, shows mm -hmm. building up to movies. Okay. Um, I watched an astounding 30 new seasons of television this year. Whoa. New yeah. I, I made like, some fucking time for, I want to preface all of this with the fact that I, I maintained a full-time job. I have a relationship in which we are extremely happy. I did 11,000 minutes on this podcast. I by no means dedicated all my time to being a couch potato. I just spent all my free time being a couch potato. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, when it comes to, uh, I have various people who other podcasts I talk to who are like, gosh, I miss, I'm, I miss doing playing video games and watching what I wanted to watch and doing this instead of dedicating all my time to this one thing. Completely get that. All I wanted to do was watch the things we watched for this and watch other things. I don't I don't make a lot of time for video games. Video games are not big for me. Um, I turn something on. I do stuff for the podcast. I, I make the graphics. I do whatever. So like I I made pr I was productive with my time. I didn't just watch a bunch of shit, but I did watch plenty of shit. Um, <laughs> so I did 30 seasons of television. Um, wow. And I'm going to go ahead and list off 30 through 6 before we get to the top 5. And then 30. when you do get to your top 5, are you going to name your 5 first or 1 first? I'm going 5 to 1. 5 okay. to 1 for sure. Okay, okay. 5 good. to 1 for sure. Good. Because uh, I will only have a top 5. Exactly, yeah. So this will be your segment here. Um, no, yeah, 33 so, uh, through 6. I'm not even going to go into detail on a lot of them. I'll probably say who they star and brief little mm. yeah i liked it or whatever mm. the fuck um but 30 new seasons of television at 30 i got murderville netflix original series starring uh will arnett where he has uh a new guest star on every week and they do not have the script it is improv oh um, yeah i heard i've actually heard about that though that, that very funny fun. they just released yeah. a holiday special one with jason bateman and maya rudolph and it was hilarious um which i guess technically i could probably add to my Movie ranking if we're counting specials. But uh, at 29, High School Musical, the musical, the series, season three. Um, that was a goodie. I don't have many other comments on that. Uh, at 27, Solar Opposite, season three, animated by the same guys as Rick and Morty, uh, voiced by Justin Roiland as well, I believe. So, like a very Rick and Morty esque comedy on Hulu. Very funny. Uh, 26, Blockbuster on Netflix. Uh, was also a very cute comedy. Got canceled after one season. Second time Netflix did end the blockbuster. Um, <laughs> at 25, Pam and Tommy, starring Sebastian Stan. And, uh, oh, I think it was... Uh, oh, yeah, when he was Tommy Lee Curtis. and Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah what was Tommy the show Lee. called? 
is Pam and Tommy and Lily James. Lily James was his mm. co-star as Pam Anderson. Seth Rogen was in it. Nick Offerman was in it. Fantastic show. I just watched a lot of TV. I really enjoyed this year. Um, and uh, Sebastian Stan's fantastic. And I mean, Lily James is fucking brilliant in it as well. Like it's insane how much she looks like Pam Anderson uh, in that show. But uh, Annie Hoosel at 24. I've got How I Met Your Father. The How I Met Your Mother spinoff series on Hulu. It was very cute, but again, I watched a lot of good shows. Um, at 23, oh, I'm realizing I skipped a number. Oh. So I'll have a, I guess this is, it was 29 shows. This is 22 uh, that, that I'm coming into now. Um, okay. 22, I got Moon Knight. First MCU show appearing on the, uh, on, in the top 22 of 2022. Um, Okay. It was, uh, I loved that shit. Oscar Isaac was fantastic. Not a great adaptation of the character, but nevertheless a very enjoyable show. At 21, Euphoria Season 2. Again, love love me some Euphoria. Uh, at 20, Heartstopper on Netflix. Very, very cute romantic comedy. Uh, just very, just very cutesy romantic high school stuff. Like, uh, the way, the way you felt falling in love the first time in high school. Very adorable stuff. At 19, I got The Boys, season three. Oh, shit. I yeah. watched it. Okay, I forgot about that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, have... yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I have one show that will be excluded now. Ooh, okay. that, that one you cut out. That's the that's the tough stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, The Boys, season three at 19. So it was very low on my list. Probably a lot lower than most people would have it. Um, 18, Russian Doll, season two. Love me some Natasha Leone. At 17, Harley Quinn, season three. Cannot recommend that show enough. I think season three was probably its weakest season yet, but I did enjoy it nonetheless. At 16, Tales of the Jedi. You might have. Do you, I did actually, you already have that? Okay. Wow. I got Tales of the Jedi, but I somehow missed. There's another one that's huge that I will have to obviously exclude something else for. House of the Dragon, a show that we covered yeah, that we watched this go. year. I didn't even include. Okay, wow. TV shows. I okay, okay. Yeah, there's I'm a lot. There's a lot more than you might think. At fifteen, um, <laughs> at fifteen, Miss Marvel. Mm-hmm. I got at, everything Marvel, everything Star Wars. So okay, good. I'm, at, I'm 14, covered on that. at fourteen, She Hulk. Uh, the cu- couple of Marvels there, and I think that will top off the Marvel television. I don't think I have any mm-hmm. beyond that in my top thirteen. Um, at thirteen, Abbott Elementary season one. Season two was also very strong. They both happened to be mostly in 2022. That show is fantastic. Probably the best comedy on TV right now. Uh, Quinta Brunson is fantastic. You remember Everybody Hates Chris mm-hmm. and Let It Shine? Yeah. The, uh, the lead actor in those is, is in Abbott Elementary as a grown fucking man. He's, uh, he's mm-hmm. absolutely stellar in it. Uh, I have heard, I, I have had friends tell me to check out Abbott Elementary. Actually. Oh, so, and, and another one that's just really cute, a nice sitcom, nice slow burn romance going on in the background, some Jim and Pam ass shit. Uh, you got, you got, got to check that out. Workplace comedy, mockumentary type shit where they do the little cutaway confessionals. It's, it's nice. Uh, at 12, this is the first Star Wars edition besides Tales of the Jedi, the book of Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. Um, really, really enjoyed that show. And it did technically start in 2021, which is why you might not have it. That's probably why, because I um, I was basing on the first day of release date whenever I was checking Letterbox, so that's why I wouldn't have. Yeah, I base it off of what most of the episodes aired during. That's fair. Uh, so they had one episode before the new year. The rest of it happened in 2022, so I consider it a 2022 show. Um, so yeah, didn't quite break the top ten, but like I said, watched a lot of great television that I really really loved. So uh. At 11, What We Do in the Shadows Season 4, potentially amongst my favorite comedies of all time. Um, If you haven't watched What We Do in the Shadows, if you're looking for a nice 25-minute comedy, make that the next one you watch. It is hilarious. Uh, Okay. Strongly, strongly recommended. Season 4 was fantastic. Now we get to the top 10. We're at 10. I got Stranger Things 4 which uh, was another biggie from this year. You watched a lot more TV than you realized, I'm seeing. I did, man. Yeah, I'm, 
I just don't remember TV. I guess. Wow. This no, is, it doesn't stand uh, out as much as the movies. I, 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 yeah. I, and there's reason for that. You know, like it's a little. It co- it comes and goes. You know, you forget about it. It says it doesn't last as long. But uh, mm. especially when it is those binge format shows that drop all at once and then uh, disappear. Yeah. But uh, at nine, Peacemaker. Mm-hmm. That's a, that was a big one for me. Loved that show. James Gunn. Get James Gunn's direction to that. Fantastic. At eight, Wednesday on Netflix, starring mm. Jenna Ortega, produced by Tim Burton. Loved that shit. And frankly, when it came to the top 15, 16, 17 here, I love all these shows. There's it, it was really just yeah. deciding what I loved more. Um, and Wednesday was absolutely fantastic. Next one is my second highest Star Wars show. At seven, I have Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, it was a very, very fulfilling show from a nostalgia point of view, um, and that carried it here. You know, I think the last two episodes really make that show what it is. But uh, before that, you know, I loved me some little Leia. I loved the the dynamic between Ben and Leia. I thought that was a really fun one. So Obi Wan Kenobi at seven, and then at six to top it off, Apple TV Plus's Severance, which is bloody fucking brilliant. Probably okay. critically hard to say it's not top five. Hard to say it's not top five critically, but enjoyment wise, fell just outside of it. The cliffhanger they left us on at the end of season one is absolutely fucking killing me. I cannot wait till season two. Um, and that brings me to my top five. How many did you end up rattling okay. off there? Now I have 11 total shows. There um, you go. Not, not, yeah, not five. Um, so I think. It was pretty easy to decide what's going in the top five, I'm pretty sure. Um, the top three are, like, set, that's for sure. It's, like, four and five that are are the only ones that I'm kind of having trouble of which ones I'm going to include and exclude. Um, ones that I definitely know I will be excluding, um, I guess, yeah, that's tough. To say, like, because this is basically the worst show, the show that I didn't care about at all this year, and what is it? Ooh, that's tough. Not to yes. say you didn't care about it. You could, you that's still could true. have enjoyed it. You just enjoyed I, I it. Yes, I only saw eleven shows. I didn't hate a single one of them. There like you go. every single show I watched, I I had a very good time watching it. Um, and the the show that I have at the bottom, um, and these three at the bottom are all kind of I group them all together. Yeah, um, I guess you don't necessarily have to rank them. I just already ranked yeah. them coming into this. So if you just have a group, you can go ahead and throw those out. Eleven is Moon Knight. Um, it's the Marvel show that I think that I just had the least fun with this year. I think it, it was pretty good. And I, I I think the the acting was great and everything like that. It was just some things were a little weird, and it was it was okay, very fun. Um, but overall, just kind of my least favorite Marvel show. These next two are, like, pretty interchangeable. Um, and it's Miss Marvel and She-Hulk. I yeah. kind of see them as exactly the same. I love the show because it pissed people off for the wrong reasons. And if people just turn that part of their brain off, they would actually enjoy a show for once. Um, I think I would actually put Miss Marvel a little bit above She-Hulk if I were. Um, just for the ending of She-Hulk, I think that it was just a little... I don't know. It was an ending of a fun show, and uh, you know, it's different, and it was you know fourth wall breaky and cool. But you I like don't know. the narrative cohesiveness. I get you. I get you. Yeah, for sure. yeah. Um, but then um, I think yeah, I think that is my top five. Yeah, it is okay. Um, next up comes Obi Wan Kenobi. Um, that would be my number eight. Um, and I, I think um, I can comfortably put. Obi Wan above She Hulk and Marv or Miss Marvel, um, because I think Star Wars alone, the hype for just seeing Obi Wan Kenobi and Hayden Christensen again, or um, sorry, Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen again, was awesome. And um, I don't think the show lived up to the hype that we all thought it was going to be. But after rewatching it, like one time, I remember and I'm like, okay, re- removing from all the hype, it was it was a really good show, and we got really cool characters in there. Um, but it's still number eight. Um, next up would be Stranger Things. Season four is where that would slot in. Ooh, um, okay. I, I think so. Not in my top five. That was close. These 
these like here's where they all start to get like man I, it it feels like it should be in my top five but it's like it's not yeah what's the first out um and I think the first out man these three are so hard but I really really loved five and I think I have to yeah these are just my favorites and that's how I feel about them but it's ha oh, it just sucks um it's Westworld season four would be Ooh. the first out. Um, I know and that's it's so hard to say because I love Westworld so much but I really think that the season of episode the season I was looking for season four it really feels like a first part to the bigger it story works. they were trying to tell in season five and I really really hope another network picks it up or someone finishes, I really hope the Nolan, I don't know, maybe in like a movie or some shit, you know, they, they really, the Christopher Nolan and Jonathan Nolan come together, make the new Westworld movie, you know, that's how it all started in the first, wait, did the show come out first or the movie come out first? Like the first oh, original movie, Westworld. movie came out in, set in like the 70s, so it's. So yeah, cool. I think it'd be kind of cool to have movie adapted into a TV show and then that Cap it TV off show was a TV show. It, yeah, it's, it's a perfect bookend. Um, so that, that's why it had to fall, be the first one to fall. I get and you. Then, that's understandable, so yeah. but that brings us to our top five, and it segues really are. nicely into my five, where I have Westworld Season 4. Okay, um, I'm glad it does get some recognition, at least. That's good. I loved, I loved this season of television, and, you know, when we were fresh off of House of the Dragon, I think I had a better time watching Westworld Season 4. Uh, but all the reasons you said or why it ends up being less fulfilling. I have a, I have a bitter taste in my mouth now because we don't mm-hmm. get to finish it. Uh, because like it was a fantastic season of television, but it wasn't a fantastic last season of television, which is what it ended up being. Um, and that's uh super disappointing. So disheartening. I've been watching that show for like five fucking years, man. And... It sucked. It's, or three, three and a half, four, something like that. But like, uh, it, it hurts so bad. It hurts so much. Uh, I loved that show, and uh, there's probably no way it's done forever, hardest, right? There's far no and away, the, oh yeah, I'm not counting on it. I think that's yeah, it. Yeah, true. Um, I shouldn't count on it. I think it is the hardest I've ever been hit by a show cancellation. Was mm. Westworld season Westworld being canceled? Um, hard to think of another one that's hit me like that. Like, like genuinely fucked up the rest of my day. Like, I was like, it did suck to hear that news. Yeah, it did suck. And then they showed like all the the ratings, like how it went up for season one, and then season two went a little down. Season three was a huge drop, and then season four was like, was like barely breaching 500,000 a week. And that's the sad thing is that like season three is the worst Westworld season there is. But season four, like, they were coming back. Like, it felt, it it had the feelings. Oh, they were coming back with a fucking bang, dude. Like yeah. they knew, they knew what they did wrong, and they mm-hmm. were correcting that, and they yeah. did so fucking good. Mm-hmm. Ah, I, I really hope I don't know something comes, but I, I don't want to get my hopes up. But a movie, some network picks it up. Regardless, I don't know. It's they they set up such a cool world to not like reveal what because it it was so much of a bigger scale than we ever you know like they were gonna reveal something so crazy you know, like. It was going to be the whole world was taken something. I don't know. Like, who knows what that show could have turned into. But God, it was man. so fucking good. It's so disappointing. Yeah. But this is 2022 in review. We had to talk about the biggest heartbreak television wise yeah. of 2022. And that was it for me. That was it. Yeah. OK, well, my number five. Um, surprised that you had. Well, I guess you just watched vastly more television. So it makes sense. But um, my number five is actually Book of Boba Fett. Um, now, because I, whenever I was adding Ooh. on mine, um, I considered Book of Boba Fett in 2021 because I was looking at the release dates of the first episode. Um, but it does make way more sense to include this in 2022. Um, so I, I don't know. I, looking at all of them, I was weighing if I enjoyed Book of Boba Fett more or Westworld season four. And I think if I wasn't covering Westworld every single week, like if I was a casual viewer of Westworld, Oh, That's, that show's tough. Like, that show is really tough, and, like, we got a lot of season four satisfaction from a lot of our theories becoming either true or just so wrong. And that's the fun of that show. 
um, I think. And Book of Boba Fett was Star Wars, and we got two Mandalorian episodes, um, and it was just super fun. It was a, I feel like a, a you know, a passion project um, that, oh my god, how am I blanking on his name? Boba. Mar- yeah, Mary Morrison, like, brought in, you know, his traditional dance was super cool, like, to actually bring in um, real world stuff into Star Wars where it fits perfectly because we're on different oh, planets and it stuff. Was it's fucking brilliant. Um, I'm so glad you have it top five because so yeah. uh, I, I did watch a lot of television and there were a few things that like I'm impressed you have that above Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's that's incredible. Yeah, to me. Um, I do. Obi-Wan was just kind of disappointing to me. Like, that's the word I keep using for Mm Obi-Wan, which is so sad. Because it's, it's, it shouldn't have been disappointing. We just overhyped it to the point where it was. If, if they dropped Obi-Wan without a word of like, and they were just like, we didn't even market this. Here's an Obi-Wan series, six episodes. Here you guys go. Merry Christmas. You know, like out of nowhere. Um, I think people would have received it a whole lot better. I think people would have still hated um, Reva. Um, Reva, or is it Reva? Reva, Reva. Is it is it E? Is it a, a strong E or a soft E? I think it's a soft E, and it's more like I think it's more like Ray Reva. 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 But yeah, I feel like people hated her. Um, so I, you know, I love I love just because she's a woman. Um, but the actual like, like her getting stabbed twice in the gut. Like, actually is a little, I don't know. Um, her coming back from that, like, twice in a row. Hey, man. Maul got cut in half. I guess, I don't know. It is just, like, it doesn't matter. It's the storytelling, you know. I don't know. It was just, it felt, I guess, n- it didn't feel like what they wanted to do with Obi-Wan for some reason. It felt they got they got a couple cool epic moments in there. And then the rest of it was just kind of like, all right, how do we fill the gaps? Um, gotcha. But but yeah, that's that's well, why Obi Wan fell for me. But the book of Boba Fett was fantastic, though. Like I think back to him riding the fucking Rancor at the end, you know, getting <laughs> like Luke a Manta. Skywalker, Ahsoka, Din Djarin, and Grogu all together. Like right? Luck. Yeah, we get so we got so much cool. I had a theory that freaking Boba was gonna bring water back to Tatooine by cracking the inside milk, water, coconut, whatever that's inside of Tatooine. You know, like that's I don't know. That show was super fun. It's fun. Um, yeah, that show was awesome. And it was it was ceaselessly Star Wars too. You know, like George Lucas. Fuck, I guarantee you, he fucking loved that show. And the the new people, like the the new wave, the yeah, and- trash and. Scad Wait, and, didn't they have a, a name to them? The yeah, this, this, the like the, whatever they had, their like yeah, little like enhancements, a, a, a cybernetic enhancements. Cyber, I can't remember what they were. I feel like they had a group name. You know, I think um, they did. Even with the the crazy three sixty spin shot, you know that that oh, was, was outstanding. Though. You know, like I, I don't know. It was just I saw it, I laughed immediately because it was cringy. But then I'm like, dude. He's just having his hero moment. I would do the exact same shit if I was in Book of Boba Fett as, like, a side character like that. You have to do something to, like, make yourself memor- You know, just, like, something. That was the- that was the- I don't know. I love- I like- I love it now. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I- I- that was the hardest part of this top five was Westworld Season 4, Book of Boba Fett, for me. But, I feel like these- these four might surprise you, um, but- well, four Maybe might not, surprise you, my friend, because okay. uh, my four is House of the Dragon. Okay, um, interesting. Yeah, I love me some House of the Dragon. Uh, it was a fantastic show to cover. I had a grand old time covering it. Um, you know, I think part of the reason it kind of falls a little bit is I'm rewatching. We're we're rewatching Game of Thrones. And I am rewatching Game of Thrones season one and realizing I probably do like that season of television a bit more. I don't think it's exactly as well done. Um, mm. But I think the storytelling method and the structure to the story is not as good as it has been. I do like that we get this giant, grand, year spanning story in House of the Dragon. Um, but I do like the intimate moments more, and that's not to say that I didn't fucking love the season of television. It's top five. I'm just justifying why it's four. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I had Obi-Wan Kenobi, Stranger Things 4, The Book of Boba Fett, all these giant shows outside of my top five. Uh, Peacemaker, uh, 
House of the Dragon Man. It's a uh, it was a good one. It was a fun one to watch. Patty Considine was fantastic. Emma Darcy and Millie Alcock fucking dominated. Like that was one where the acting was fantastic. The direction was on point. Uh, Matt Smith was fucking brilliant. I lo- I loved that show, and uh, it had to be top five. Just a matter of where it fell, and these top three for me, just as far as enjoyment is concerned. Ooh, like those are the top three. They just are, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, I think um, my top three are comfortably my top three, no matter what. Um, that that's that's very fair. But my number four, uh, this is where Tales of the Jedi um, falls Ooh, for me. Yes, um, it re-sparked the love I had for, like, Rebels, Clone Wars, and all Star Wars animated. Um, so that was awesome. I got Dooku on both sides. We got Yaddle um, actually being, like, a prominent character and speaking, um, which was awesome, and Yoda just does that to fuck with, you know, I guess Yoda just speaks like that just because. Or that's just a Yoda thing. Yaddle spoke completely normal, and it got me, like, I thought about it for, like, she was just speaking normal, normal English, you know? Yeah. Proper. Almost, almost the complete polar opposite of Yoda. She's speaking, like, proper English. And then, like, it didn't click for a couple seconds. I'm like, you know, I'm just hearing her talk. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, it's insane. We're seeing Yad on screen. I'm like, wait a minute. She's talking fucking normal. She's talking normal. And then I just started laughing. I'm like, wait. I'm like, did, I don't know. I feel like Yoda... He had a certain age, and then he started talking. I don't think Yoda started... I don't know. I feel like that's not a forever thing. I feel yeah. like he's gone through eras of different voices. I'd, um, I'd believe it. I'd believe it. I'd, I could tell you from what I've read... Oh, I guess that's true. It's in that yeah, at novels. Least at, I mean, but, like, even what is canonically... There for Yoda, he is at minimum 600 which is still super fucking old, you know, like, it's not like, it's not like, oh, he was a young lad when he was 650, you know, like, uh, well, I guess, yeah, how old's Yaddle? Do we even, like, during, say, like, just Order 66, like, how old is Yaddle there? Like, during just that era, do we know, like, her general age? I guess I couldn't tell you. I guess I couldn't tell you. I think that's something we could probably figure out if we did a good old Google. How old is Yaddle in Star Wars? 483 years old at the time of her death. A young... So a pretty young for them. Right? Yeah, relatively. Maybe about 900, 1,000-ish? I would guess she's middle age. You know? Yeah. I'd guess that for human life, she's probably 50. Okay. I guess she did have, like, some brown hair. It wasn't white Was it hair. White? She does look a little younger now that I'm looking at her, like, in the movie. Yeah, okay. I guess, for some reason, in my head, I've always just kind of assumed she was they were around the same age, the same age yeah. as Yoda, and that they were, like, husband-wife. It is all, you know, but, like, that's, like, the equivalent of a, a on-the-way-out grandpa getting with, like, a, a middle-aged mom. Yeah, like, oh, that's even, yeah, no, it's like, yeah, that's weird. That's weird. Maybe, weird. M- you know, Grogu, I actually don't want to be the kid of Yoda in Yaddle. <laughs> I'd, I'd actually maybe prefer if it was Yaddle and someone else, not Yoda, actually. Like, Yoda's the great, could, whoa! Could Yoda be Yaddle's dad? Like, is it, like... You know, is the lineage at all known between no, them? Not. Well, that's the thing, too, is that, like, what's nuts about this species is that we have met three of them, and they are all Force-sensitive. I love this theory, that their species is the Jedi, and they lent their their name to the Order the way the Sith led their name— lent their name to the Sith Order. Because the Sith was a species at one point. Dude, George is all about the yin and the yang. <laughs> it only makes sense. Oh, that's awesome. The species. They are the... Yeah! They are the Jedi. I think that'd be awesome. I don't think we're ever gonna know. I don't think we'll... like. 
I don't know that they're on a mission to tell us. I think that's just I think that's just it. You know, I think we're just never going to know. I had canon at least for now on. Oh, that's I love that theory. That's my favorite theory about it. Like I saw that recently. I can't yeah, I wish just, I could give the person credit. Maybe maybe it's not even like Yaddle has um another like maybe it's not even like they have to have a partner. It's just there is one it. there's just one every 250 years, you know? Yep. One just pops up on Dagobah. Or maybe that's just Yoda's home. They just pop up wherever they're needed. Yeah, you know, like, I think, uh, I, I've liked the theory that they're like, they have some sort of asexual breeding. Oh, where, okay. like, they don't need to, yeah. they don't have sex in order to create a child. They can just, uh, like, spores or some shit. They're just like, yeah. They grow or some shit. I think it'd be really cool if they are the Jedi and they grow from, like, grow. Like, that'd be dope. Um, like, okay. death breeds new life, which, like, it's like, it'd be really, really cool. But, Tales of the Jedi at four. That's a, that's high praise. That is high praise. Uh, wait. Grogu's 50 whenever he's found. When he's, no. He's born in the same year as Anakin yeah. Skywalker. Yeah. Okay. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Look at the yin yang with that, dude. Yeah, there you go. A force baby made by Palpatine is Anakin. I guess that's unconfirmed, but confirmed. And a force baby made by the light. By the Palpatine of the time for the Jedi. Whether it's Yoda. directly Yoda or just happens Yoda. because you man, Yoda. wow, that's that's crazy. Stemming from my number, I, that's I mean, all. This stems from my number four being Tales of the Jedi. Um, is what this is all stemming from. But that fantastic uh, that's why, animated show. That's why, yeah, I watched it all in one sitting. I could oh, yeah. not. Put that it was down. how you had to do it too. Literally, I just couldn't put it down. I'm like, oh my god, this is so good. This that's, is just we, we talked a lot about the Dooku stuff. The Ahsoka stuff is fantastic. Oh like, my I, god, I, yeah. I do, like wow. as a book yeah. reader, I'm a little disappointed because Ooh. the Ahsoka novel is good and has a lot of uh, really solid representation in the mix over there, mm. um, and they just kind of completely negated it in the show. But I've come of the mind that books are a valid medium. That story exists. It doesn't just get erased because they decided to do something else on screen. Now both those stories exist. It's not. It's not that one didn't happen; the other did. Mm. These are fiction. Whatever you yeah. wanted to happen happened. Uh, that's how I go about it. And so uh, I, it, it allows me to enjoy Tales of the Jedi. Acknowledge that it didn't do the book because it. It's very clearly adapting the events of that book into shorts, which is a nuts decision already. Um, because that book's pretty expansive. It could have been a. It could have been a fucking movie for all for all. Hey. We we know, but uh, it had some good LGBTQ representation, and then all these all the characters who they seemingly would have introduced as those characters fucking die, um, in the show, which is uh oh, ugh. Ugh. Star Wars is they don't have a good track record with that one yet. No, they don't. Uh, they um, need to get their money up. They do. They do. And like, I, I'm encouraged by Willow right now. They've got some pretty strong LGBTQ representation going in that show, which I didn't include in this, uh, because it's not over. Uh, mm. but it probably would be close to breaching top five. Probably wouldn't be, but it's fucking awesome. Strongly recommended. Mm. Um, I need to see how they finish the season. Fair but, enough. uh, that being a Lucasfilm thing has given me hope for like the future of, that's potential good. Star Wars stuff, uh, as far that as good. that representation side of things goes. I guess with um, what's her name, uh, whoever played Cara Dune. Um, I guess they were, they were they were good acting on the. You know, they they were very like, okay, well, you're on that side of the fence. You're not being on our show anymore. Deuces, get the um, fuck out of here. So, so I guess that that is that is nice. There, it's just like in the show itself, they haven't decided to yeah, like, like, write it in. Mel and Cinta um, don't even fucking hug, man. Oh, yeah, dude, that's the easiest in right there. Oh my god, they had the easiest. Well, maybe for the storytelling, it is better that they did. You know, it's like that's. That's just their their whole thing is that that's their whole relationship dynamic is that they can't right but now. Even in that moment where they are like, this might be the last time we see each other. But that's Vel. That's just Vel. Senta is of the mind of like, 
I am on a mission right now. I have to, you know, that that's just who she Fair. is. Fair. That's who she is. Um, I see. Yeah. I see. But four being Tales of the Jedi, very good choice. Um, that will bring me to my number three. This is where I have yet another Netflix original series, and this is my highest ranking DC show, uh, The Sandman. Yes, uh, I need, I'm adding a little watch list after, like a oh, things to watch, and I'm, you're, I'm, 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 this is a perfect recommendation list. Oh, um, dude, right this now, is so. one of uh, top three this year. Top three this year, easy. Uh, it's epic. This is an example of a show that is grand spanning as far as time. Where it doesn't really matter. Like, they cover more time in the first episode than House of the Dragon did in the entire first season. Okay. Uh, yeah, like, it's a, it's, it, but that's when they utilize the story, devi- story device in a brand new way, I'm fucking here for it. You know, like, uh, it's absolutely awesome seeing the way they deal with, like, uh, gods and men, the way they interact with them. There's this episode in the middle of the show. Uh, I think it's episode six, if I remember correctly. It's like a, middle of two arcs like the first five i would say are like an arc seven through ten are an arc and then six is this in-betweener that is just very genuinely one of the single best episodes of television of all time it tears my tears my heart apart in the first half of the episode and then puts it back together by the end and it's like that was When it came to our ratings, whenever we talked about stuff and we talked about single episode arcs, there was not a single show this year that did that better than Sandman. I have no doubts in my mind. Uh, So would this be like your top recommendation of a show that I have not, I guess in your list, is there another show that I have not seen? Yes. My, my two is one you haven't seen. Okay. Uh, But I would classify them in different ways. Like if you're a, a top, Drama recommendation, The Sandman. Okay. Top comedy recommendation, my two. And I'll get there. Gotcha. Okay, well, my three um, is more of a comedy, but still in the, the superhero vein. Um, and that's James Gunn's Peacemaker. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I can't believe I didn't, I forgot to include it. Whenever you rattled it off, I re- like, it's one of my favorite TV shows that I've just watched, like, ever. It was, yeah. like, so fun and good at the same time. Um, and it's like, I guess I went into the show just being like, I, I've seen John Cena all around social media, wearing the suit, just being funny, you know, and I, I came off of what the suicide squad, right? Mm -hmm. It did, it came out. Yeah. So I'm like, I already like the character was super cool. And like, I'm like James Gunn. I love James Gunn. I love everything he's made. So I'm like, yeah, this is going to be super fun. And it delivered on, like, every... So much more thing. than you could have ever anticipated, dude. Yeah. Like, I like I was, like, actually laughing. Like, like I don't know. It was actually funny. And but... actually made me cry so many fucking yes. times. Oh, my God. That show was brutal. His, his origin? Oh, my God. Whatever that... Oh, my God. Like, that was nuts. The end... Like, whenever he has to shoot his father in the head you know and like to get rid of him like oh like i don't know it's that show was so good um and i think i'll I'll, it it elevated even more like whenever i was putting it down in my rankings is like i am just so excited through this show as to where james gunn's taken the dc universe because like if it's going to be anything like this show um it just made me think about the opportunity for a long spanning arc for a character because I leave the suicide squad and the character I am the least interested in seeing a show about is peacemaker. He is the biggest piece of shit in the movie. I'm annoyed by Mm -hmm. him at every single fucking turn. I mean, he's funny and shit, but I mean like he ends up being the villain. He ends up being the bad guy within the, within the bad guy team, you know? And I'm like, fuck this guy. He's a bootlicker. I don't like him, you know? And then, uh, you get the show and you're like, oh my God, this poor fucking guy. Oh, he's been through so much. Uh, yeah. dude, he's, he knows how to do like James Gunn. Like I am so comfortable with him at the helm. And I 
feel for everybody who is disappointed by the loss of their favorite characters and their favorite portrayals. But watch Guardians, Guardians 2, The Suicide Squad, and Peacemaker, and just remember that the guy who did this is building out an entire universe. Yeah. And it's going to go well. Like, uh, it, there, it hasn't, there hasn't been a single actor that has left in, like, bad terms. Like, every single actor has come out saying, like, I have complete trust in what James Gunn is doing. They're, he's building his own world. That's just what he has to do. Like, it, it's part of their job. And I think the saddest one is Henry Cavill. Um, just for all the shows that he left behind for Superman. And then, like, all the commotion, the, the post credit scene of Black Adam and every You know, like, there was so yeah. much confusion with there. So that, that was the only kind of rocky one, I feel. But literally everyone else is like, oh, dude, no. Like, I'm, I'm actually cool with leaving. The, the Shazam... Um, actor, I, I saw his, like, he posted, like, a, a two-minute video about how he's pissed off of how many people are reacting to James Gunn in, in such a negative light right now, and he's, like, mm-hmm. James Gunn is, like, getting all this hate, like, you know, like, even, like, whenever he's, like, I don't, I talk to James Gunn, you know, he's building his own world, I'm not really gonna be a big part of it anymore, you know, obviously, like, and if they decide to use me, whatever. He's like, I don't care. I'm an actor. It's part of the industry, and he's going to build his own world. You guys have to understand that. That's okay. Um, and he was, like, basically just, like, just, he's like, just have trust, and don't just boycott because you're losing your favorite actors and actresses. Like, just... You put you put all your love into an industry that does this. Yeah. Just, to, like, in the... Like, that's the whole problem that people are having with Marvel right now is that they're just trying to do um, the big flashy things and following the formula over and over. But James Gunn is is very against that right now. He's taking time and writing stories that he knows, you know, he's built he's building a world. And uh, I don't think Warner Brothers um, in the state that they're in are going to look at a plan for a DC universe that's like not really put together well and, and give it the okay. Like they, I'm assuming James Gunn had to give Warner Brothers quite the expansive, like, idea. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, he has to obviously talk numbers to them and say, here's where you'll get your money. Like that's what he has to give them as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's, he's smart enough, like, where, I, I, I don't know. If, if it's any show, just like Peacemaker. That's the thing is like, I, I'm trying to think of, like, what's another character where we can get a show about that could just, you know, like, it, it it's anyone, I think, is the thing. is like, yeah, literally, yeah. it could be anyone. Because when James you look Gunn at is... Marvel versus DC on that side of things, stories about villain characters, critically well done, Peacemaker washes Venom and Venom 2, it washes Morbius... It washes everything Sony Marvel has tried to do on that side of things. And by, yeah. like, it's not even close. Like, it's it's ridiculous how not close it is. Um, yeah, that, it's... The show is ridiculous in the same vein. You have, like, the op- like the little dance number they do at the beginning. Outstanding. Um, like, it's ridiculous, but it's also... Yeah, you you laugh, you cry, you, you do everything in that show. It's... Oh. Um, that's the math that, that, that's what James Gunn's good at and I trust, almost, I trust him so much yeah, there it almost made my number two um, and I can't blame you there I can't blame you there one bit I just uh, as much as I did enjoy that show you know there were just a lot of protagonists that I uh, enjoyed a lot more and stories overall mm-hmm. that I enjoyed a little bit more so it didn't quite it broke my top ten and that says a lot uh, but mm-hmm. uh, didn't quite breach the top five that is a goodie though that is a goodie um well, that brings us to the top two then, doesn't it? It does. My top two is the only season of television I watched more than once this year. It was the only Whoa. repeat viewing from beginning to end. Um, There were a lot of single episodes out of all these other shows that I went back and took a look at and like were like, oh yeah, I loved this episode. Our Flag Means Death is the only show that I watched the the full season through more than once. Uh, Okay. Stars Reese uh, Reese Darby and Taika Waititi as pirates. And it's a a pirate comedy. And it's absolutely fucking fantastic. Hodor is in it as as a man named Wee Jean. Uh, 
one of the dudes from Train Spotting is in it. The cast is ridiculous. Uh, oh. It is the funniest, most heartwarming show I watched this year. Uh, okay. I love that show, and I will continue to love that show for as long as it is on. The guy who played the guy, uh, there's this uh character who pops up in Game of Thrones later on, named like uh, he's got a real long name, and he befriends Daenerys, and he's like a uh, his dad was a a slaver and he maintains the old ways and tries to give her counsel about her invading their land. Uh, and he helps arrange her assassination at the hands of the, uh, mm. the second sons. He's in that show. Um, and he's <laughs> an extremely funny, great character in it. Uh, mm. it is super funny, super cute. Like it's another kind of romantic comedy type show. And, uh, I love me a romantic comedy, and I think this pulled it off in the most interesting, fun way it's been done in a really long time in a in a pirate centric yeah. state, you know. And uh, I would recommend that that's one you look up very little about uh, going okay. into it, just because it's a fun. Like, I don't think you really know what you're getting into until you till you like you get like a few episodes in, and you're like, oh. Oh, okay, cool. You know, like, uh, I don't think you would have even caught that it's a romantic type of comedy until <laughs> a few episodes in. Uh, okay. Because they yeah, kind of just set the tone. Of a... I just looked up images just to see, like, what it looked like. That's all I've seen, mm. and that's all I'll do. Um, yeah. So I'll go into it just with that. That's a good... Uh, I, sounds, I, I cannot relaxed, recommend though. that show enough yeah. because Reese Darby is fantastic, and they're playing Steed Bonnet and... uh like he's playing Steed Bonnet and Taika Waititi plays Blackbeard, which are real world pirates who did exist. Uh, they're not portraying them in any accurate sort of way. These are not okay. historically accurate portrayals of these people. Okay. They are just comedic portrayals of real people. And, uh, Reese Darby plays Steed Bonnet so compellingly. Ty like watching Taika Waititi as Blackbeard is just so obviously the most fun he had all year which is just mm. like saying a lot considering he directed a whole Marvel movie and was a supporting role in it. And he did nothing but have fun with his friends making it. Uh, I think our flag means death. He did that on a different level. Um, it was, it was just such a fun, fun show. Um, one that Taika Waititi gets a lot of credit for, even though he only directed like the first episode and didn't create the show. He just stars in it. Uh, he was like kind of the one who brought like, like, Oh, Taika Waititi is behind this. Yeah let's okay. watch it you know like that's what drew me in you know like it honestly that's what made me go i'm gonna watch this type of YTV. fuck yeah i love that uh he has very little to do with the show beyond being in it um and uh hmm. he's fantastic in it though i love i love his okay. character in it i love reese darby's character in it they're fucking fantastic so uh yeah, that sounds like a blast top that's my comedy two. yep that's top my number comedy two right now and man top drama recommendation on the watch list i think out of how I've what I've heard so far, I think I will watch Sandman first. That's the one that I I think interests me the most, and then uh, I think Our Flag Means Death is number two right now. After that, mm. um, I don't know. It could, though, I guess I, it'd have to be what mood I'm in. I guess if I'm really wanting to start like a a comedy or a or the drama yeah, and the Sandman, you know, so. they're those are hour long episodes. Our Flag Means Death. You're getting about thirty. It's a, it's a little easier okay. of a watch. It's only it's up in the air then. It'll have yeah. to be wherever wherever my mind's at at the time yeah. to see which one I watch first. But. Well, in The Sandman, it's one that I had to legitimately take one at a time. Like, I think it's 10 episodes. Like, there's a 10-episode season, and then there's, like, an 11th bonus episode that they released a couple weeks after the season because, like, it is such a show that, like, it does have an overarching story, but the magic of it is what they can do in a single episode and then get you on to the next episode with. Okay. So, uh... It's like a 10 episode season with a bonus episode. And I think I legitimately watched it over the course of maybe nine or 10 days. Like it took me, gotcha. I watched one and was like, Oh, that was so fucking good. I don't think I even want to go on to the next one. Like I want to <laughs> sit with this. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, that shit was okay. so good. So, uh, re strongly recommend those two. Awesome. Well, my number two was already spoken. Um, but this is where House of the Dragon lies for me. Um, and, I mean, it, I Peacemaker was the only one that could have beat it, I think, out of my top three. Um, but as I was thinking of it, I'm like, it, you know, re-sparked that weekly Game of Thrones watch. You know, I tuned in 
Sunday at, what was it, 7 or 8? Was it 8? I feel like it was 8. Yeah, it was, like, perfect. It's like, after dinner, I'm I'm having, like, a good meal. I sometimes made the mistake of making dinner a little too late and eating during the episode, uh, Ah. which was not a good thing for some of these episodes. Um, But, no, every every week was super fun, especially covering the show, too. Um, Just a show that I think... um, the reason it's above Peacemaker is that it is, like, critically, I could not say Peacemaker's a better made show than House of the Dragon. And I think I had around the same enjoyment for both of them. Pure enjoyment, I think I enjoy Peacemaker more just because I'm actually, like, laughing and just, I don't, it's like, just a very, very, very fun show to watch. But, like, House of the Dragon, that's a different type. It's, like, hitting so many different, um, serotonin, you know, regions in my brain, it's hitting the, the Game of Thrones, like, oh, they're alluding to Game of Thrones. This is epic. And then it's like, um, here's the Targaryen, start, um, you know, region of my brain going crazy because everyone in the show is a Targaryen now, pretty much. Mm. Oh, and you don't have three baby dragons. You just have, like, I don't know, 13, 4, we don't even really know how many are out there. There's some that are just hidden, um, but we have big as fuck dragons that are just eating other ones right now, too. Yep. So it's like, um, show was just so epic, and I love the week to week watch. Um, oh, and it was such a, it was definitely top two week to week watches for me this year. Um, West World Season one, 4 was yeah. a fun week to week watch, but there's only um, one show that beats House of the Dragon, and I think it is our mutual top one. It is, um, yeah, I and. and it's just obvious. Um, there was, I guess my top three was set. My top one was set first. Oh, like no doubt. It was like, yeah, Andor is my favorite show. It is pure enjoyment. It is pure critically master. It is like masterfully crafted. Um, like I don't, I struggle to actually find anything that I dislike about the show. Maybe or that is bad about it. Maybe it is only that Vel and Cinta did not kiss. Maybe that is my actual, like, just pull the trigger. Pull the trigger, Disney. If it doesn't happen season two, I will actually be mad. If it, I will have, I will have actual issues then. Unless they're like split up, you know, and that's like part of the story somehow. And like they, but I hate, I would hate that even more maybe. So if we don't get a Vel and Cinta kiss season two, there's something wrong in the in the LGBTQ department at Dis- at Lucasfilm at Disney. Yeah. or Disney somewhere up in the line. Lucasfilm, Disney, yeah. They're having oh. a rough time over there. But, yeah, man, Andor, we covered it week to week for every week it was on. Uh, and it's like I have, there was no question about it. It was the number one show of the year. I loved it with all my heart. It was it was all the critical things I loved about Westworld season four and House of the Dragon and uh, all all these other great great shows. And it was Star Wars. Yeah, and that's what I've been wanting from Star Wars television is what Andor brought me. Uh, it made me feel the way I felt when I'm watching I don't know a Game of Thrones when I'm watching a Westworld. I got those feelings about Andor, and that's uh. That's something that I'd come to accept I wouldn't feel. You yeah. know, like, I love The Mandalorian, and I love The Book of Boba Fett, and I love Obi-Wan Kenobi, but I love them because they're Star Wars. I didn't love them because I was like, oh, the way they did season one, oh my goodness, it was so fucking good. It was, it, they're great joys to watch, and they are very good. I never want to dismiss any of them. They're very solid. This just brought it to a whole other level where I was like, mm-hmm. oh my God, this a golden is what I've globe been waiting level. for. It brought it to a golden globe level. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not one that's big on award shows, whatever. Um, but hearing that the last nomination for Star Wars was Alec Guinness <laughs> for, for an actor. Yeah. Um, that's, that's insane. And, and Diego Luna, it, I don't even know who else is nominated. He's the um, only one that's nominated Golden Globes, yeah. I mean, like, just nominated for... Because what's the category? Just Lead best. actor in a drama. So I, I don't know who he's going up against. 
I guess. Is that how the Golden Globes work? I yes. don't know, I guess. Yeah. He'll be going uh, up against uh, Bob Odenkirk as Jimmy McGill, Saul Goodman, um, okay. which is the season of television that came out this year, which I have unfortunately not been able to watch because it's not on Netflix. I did watch the first five. Uh, Better Call Saul, I'm coming for that ass as soon as you hit Netflix, though. As soon as you hit Netflix. Um I know he's going up against him, but beyond that, um, I don't think a House of the Dragon actor got a lead acting nom. I don't think a Westworld one did. Um, Barry, I think maybe uh, Bill Hader got nominated for Barry. Mm. I feel like that's one that uh, happened, and that's another show I need to catch up on. There's just like, I watched so much shit that some shit slipped through the cracks, and that was one of them. Um, See. So he was. Oh, wow, there's just, yeah, a lot more categories than I thought. Television actor drama series. Okay, Jeff Bridges. Um, he's going up against him um, as the old man. Uh, going up, Kevin Costner as Yellowstone. Mm. Or uh, Kevin Costner in Yellowstone. Is Jeff Bridges also? No, Yellow- he's, uh, he's in a different thing. Okay, um, Diego Luna, and then, yeah, Better Call Saul, and Adam Scott for Severance. Um, <laughs> Severance, my six. Fucking oh. loved that show. So, so there, okay. Um, I haven't seen I Yellowstone. Say, Adam Scott's fantastic in it, but if if he beats Diego Luna, I'll I'll riot. I haven't seen Yellowstone, but a lot of people love that show. Um, That's high on my list. My scary. dad's like, gotta watch Yellowstone. There's, yeah, like, I know. there's currently an a prequel going on that has Harrison Ford in it. Yeah, dude, that's scary. That's scary seeing him in the nomination. Um, I really hope Diego Luna wins this because, like, oh, it would just be so nice. I don't, and the one I'm most care. worried about is Bob yeah. Odenkirk as Jimmy McGill, Saul Goodman. That That's a very popular show as well. I guess I don't really care about nominate, you know, award shows. Anyways, it's a lot of it's just for money. Um, and what you know, it's politics. Who can, who can be there to give a speech that could give them the most views? You know, at the time, basically. So. Part of it's real, but part of it's not. So I'm not going to base my love for Andor off of a Golden Globe win. At least he's nominated. Um, he definitely deserves it. Um, as well as, like, Andy Serkis. Um, his performance was unreal as Kino Loy. Um, mm-hmm. One of my favorite Star Wars performances Kino of all time. Star Wars is Luthen Rael. Luthen is one of my favorite Star Wars characters, at, like, as of right now. That's the thing. I've gotten... One of my favorite new Star Wars performances out of Diego Luna, out of um, Andy Serkis, out of Luthen, or, yeah, Luthen, even uh, freaking Saw Gerrera, too. Like, we got, like, Luthen and Saw, like, those scenes were so cool, both of them. Like, both scenes were so badass. We got it the first time, and we were like, I don't think we realized that we just got Luthen and Saw talking. And then it happened again, and it was even cooler the second time. <laughs> Um, so like, yeah, the, the Andor just kept upping itself and that's the thing that we were like, how are they going to do it? After the eye, we were like, how are they going to do it? What the hell are they going to do? Prison break? Oh my God. <laughs> you were, yeah, they did it. Um, yep. I think the arcs just is what did it. It's like, it's such a cool, it's why the Clone Wars is so good. It's why, you, I don't like... It is the Clone Wars taken to live action and with a little bit more thought with just because you have to limit it to 12 episodes and not 22 per season. And And you're not telling an anthology story. You're telling a narratively chronological story. So it's like it's like if Clone Wars just got upgraded to live action in better, better story writing. I am firmly of the mind there has never been a better Star Wars thing. And I have the only, only thing that make that gives me pause is Empire Strikes Back. I rewatched that last night just because I, I got all the movies on Blu-ray and I was like, what's the most Christmassy? Well, the one where it snows a lot. Let's go to, let's go. Eh, Empire Strikes Back. Nightmare snowy, but because of still snowy, still scary snowy. snowman. That's the uh, earliest memory I have, by the way, is being yeah. frightened of the of that of that scary snowman guy. Um, yeah. But uh, I watched it last night, and I was like, you know what? I love this movie, but goddamn, 
and or did something different. It just, oh my God, I can't get over how good that show was. And I cannot wait to rewatch it. I still haven't done that yet. Uh, that's one where I've gone back and watched single episodes. I've watched One I Way know. Out a couple times. I need the full. A couple times. I need that full watch. Ooh. Like I need like a day. I wonder what the total r- run time is. It's well, I guess is it under twelve hours? It's under it twelve hours, I'd yeah. say. So it's definitely possible in a day. Yeah. Maybe like intermission between every arc end. I feel yeah. like I'll watch every. Well, I guess the arc is hard because you'd watch. Because the arcs aren't three, 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 three. You no, know, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, b- watch every three. Yeah, you take a break at the old. eye. I feel, um, and it's not like it's a show you can't eat during. It's not like gory. That's true. That's true. Um, I feel like I could do it in a day. Oh, I definitely could. Um, so maybe we that, maybe we make it a point to at some point do that. Um, that's that would be fun. Set aside a day and just and or day and or. And or uh, day, and, and then or cap, day it, cap the... it with Rogue One. Um, oh. oh, yeah, oh, um, yeah. Uh, I absolutely loved that show, but it did it had to be top one, and that makes my top five. And or at one, our flag means death at two. The Sandman at three, House of the Dragon at four, and Westworld season four at five. And I had Andor at one, House of the Dragon at two, Peacemaker at three. Tales of the Jedi at four and Book of Boba Fett at five. Wow, just realized I have three Star Wars shows. Three out of five, five Star Wars, yeah. Um, so there you go. That's, uh, can't complain there. But that brings us to movies. I watched a whopping 44 movies, including the MCU specials this year. Um, and we're going to do a top 10 movie. So I'm going to go ahead and rattle off 44 through 11. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was a good. It was a very, very good year for movies. I'm very, very satisfied with where I'm sitting. Oh yeah. Uh, how many movies um, for you this year? I got twelve, so I only have to eliminate two. That um, makes it easy. One of them is Morbius, and that one is obviously being yeah. eliminated. Um, but I think I'll let you give your list before I eliminate my last one. I, I'd have a All little right. more thinking to do on it. This I think. is this is hard. This is like whenever I get to the top twelve. 10 through 12, man. Mm, I don't know. I'm okay. having a rough time. Uh, but 44, I've got an animated movie in Catwoman Hunted. Easily the worst movie I've seen this year. This is not like the TV shows where some of the movies I genuinely did not like. Um, okay. And that is one of them. Um, then we got Sex Appeal. This is actually the first new movie I watched this year. It's another rom-com. Uh, it's got Jake Short and... Uh, Mika Abdallah, and uh, it's another rom-com, teenage rom-com, which uh, they have their place, but I don't find much enjoyment in them. The next one, similar vein, Crush, another teenage rom-com, but uh, gay, LGBT. Very, very cute, very fun to watch, but uh, I watched a lot of good movies. Uh, Number 41, Pause of Fury, Legend of Hank. This movie was hot ass. It was terrible. Um, And I think it's because it was marketed as a better movie than it was. It had a ridiculous cast. Um, it was a Nickelodeon production, which we did not know. I went and sat down in the theater, and everyone was fucking talking and laughing their asses off, like grown people. And I'm like, it's just not that funny. It's just not that funny. There's no way you think this is that funny. Um, Pause of huh. Fury, 41. 40, Uncharted, first movie I saw in the theaters this year. Another movie that was just not that good. Very fun to watch, very entertaining, just not that good. Uh, 39, The Bad Guys, very cool animated movie. Sam Rockwell fucks. Not his, fa- not my favorite of his, though. Chip and Dale, Rescue Rangers at 38. <laughs> Another very enjoyable movie. Like, now we're in the section that's very enjoyable movie. Didn't like it much. You know, like, uh, mm, okay. very enjoyable movie, just wasn't as good as other things I watched. Uh, 37, Minions, Rise of Gru. Critically, much better than I would have anticipated. Uh, but, uh, it is, it is a Minions movie. And I'm a little outside the target <laughs> audience, I think. Some of those fuck. Um, not gonna lie. Some of the Minions movies are actually a blast. Um, so. and this one was fun. Like, I had, like, when I, like, when I talk about these, like, 40 through 37, really, I had a lot of fun watching them. Hmm. And then, uh, 36, we get back to, like, a, well, critically, I recognize that this had a lot of good elements, 
but I did not have a good time. And that's Don't Worry Darling um, with Harry Styles and Florence Pugh. And mm. That's probably the lowest ranking critical darling I have here. Uh, okay. Because I think it was just, it tried to do something forward thinking and feminist. And I think it fell flat. Um, 35, this is where I have Enter Galactic. Oh. Kid Cuddy. Um, okay. Which uh, I did really enjoy the movie. I had a good time watching it. It's a cute rom com, but I think uh, think it's one that I enjoyed for the visuals and the music and the story wise. I was like, ah, it was it was cute, but you know, I could take it or leave it. I guess there's another um, movie I didn't add on that I didn't think about, but it it will be excluded from my top ten um, nah, as well. Yeah, but. it was it was it's fun, but it's not that. It's not that. Uh, 34, I got a new Christmas movie. Lindsay Lohan's Falling for Christmas. Very cute one. I loved watching it. It got me into the Christmas spirit a little bit more. And, uh, that's all I, that's all I look for with Christmas movies. And, uh, that was a goodie. Uh, 33, Spiderhead. Starring, uh, Chris Hemsworth, Miles Teller, and Journey Smollett. Yeah, I saw, I don't know. I saw that looking through movies of 2022, and I'm like, whoa, how did I never see that movie? Like, yeah, and this marketed is, it at all. we are now officially in the point where I like all these movies. Okay, um, and this is Spider... Spiderhead. Head. And it's one okay. word, Spiderhead. Spiderhead. This is a real mind-bendy, like, whoa, wow, we took it here. Like, it's a, it's like experimental drugs, learning how to, f- figuring out how to control people's emotions and stuff. Like, it's very, it's very cool. Very cool idea. Uh, I don't think it was executed as well as it could have been, which is why it fell, but it was a very entertaining movie. Uh, 32, Marry Me, starring Jennifer Lopez and Owen Wilson. Another great rom-com. I'm a sucker for a rom-com. Love a rom-com. Uh, and when you got Owen Wilson and J-Lo, <laughs> him. what am I not oh. going to like? Uh, at 31, The Adam Project, starring Ryan Ooh. Reynolds okay. and uh, Zoe Saldana. Another one I oh, forgot. One but will be excluded as well. Another yeah. one. You know, there are just this. certain movies that aren't top 10 movies. Yeah. They're, they're just mm-hmm. not. And this is one of them. Uh, it was good, though. It was good, though. Next, at 30, Kimmy, starring Zoe Kravitz. It was a thrill ride. It was very, very fun to watch, but uh, it was one I had no interest in watching again, which is another thing that factors into how high it ranks. You know, like, uh, I watched Kimmy once, and I was like, I will probably never watch that again, but I had a good time. Uh, at 29, Do Revenge, starring Camila Mendez and Maya Hawk. This one was extremely fun and actually had a twist that took me by surprise. I was like, oh, shit. Okay. Uh, didn't see that coming, and that's that's rare. Um, 28, I got Where the Crawdads Sing, based off a book. Very, very entertaining. Uh, another one with like a kind of wow sort of twist at the end that made me go, that reframes the whole movie. And now that single detail makes me kind of want to re- um i have hmm. it though i probably won't uh <laughs> at 27 i got trick or treat scooby doo love me a scooby doo movie this was the have new to. one this yeah. was the newbie and i loved it uh at 26 <laughs> this is the bobs burgers movie which i absolutely love caught that in theaters and i think that is the second l- lowest no third lowest for movies i saw in theaters uh, I did see Uncharted and Minions: Rise of Gru in theaters. Mm. Um, <laughs> did enjoy the Bob's Burgers movies quite quite a great deal. I love Bob's Burgers. Uh, another season of television I did watch this year that I didn't include. So uh, mm. at twenty five, The Sea Beast, very fun Netflix animated movie. Uh, it, Carl Urban, the guy who plays uh, Billy Butcher in The Boys, is the oh, lead, yeah. uh, lead voice actor in that, and okay. he's fantastic in it. I love the Sea Beast. Very, very cute movie. Another great animated movie. At 24, Black Adam. Got our Mm. first superhero movie occurring here. Uh, And, well, I had Catwoman Hunted earlier, but theatrical releases. (laughs) Black Adam at 24. Um, It Mm. does, apparently it was my least favorite superhero movie this year. Uh, And I did like it. I did enjoy it. I had a good time. Not great, though. At 23, I've got Lightyear with Chris Evans oh, as Buzz. Yeah. I still haven't Which, seen uh, that. 
It did look kind of good, actually. It's a, I, I, again, really, really enjoyed it. You know, it doesn't it's one make I sense it. how this light years world is more realistic than the world that Andy lived in, like in Toy Story. You know, like canonically, <laughs> the world of Buzz Lightyear, because this would be a movie that Andy would have seen. Yes. Promoting the toy. So. Yeah. Well, the toy was promoting the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So this is just like Andy's version of like a Marvel or DC like movie. Star Wars. And the movie that he's watching is Lightyear. Would that be like his version of animation? Would realism be Andy's animation? You know? Yeah, probably. So I guess probably. it's not con- and it's not weird, it's just it's weird to us because we're realistic and we see animation as something that's not real. Wow, that broke my brain a little bit thinking <laughs> of that movie. And but, this is another one that I did see in theaters, but I don't think I mentioned it earlier. I did see it in theaters and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, but it didn't climb super high for me. I think it had a really good last act, but the middle was a real drag. That mm-hmm. took a while to get there. The beginning's really good. The ending's really good. But the middle, I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it. Let's get there. Come on now. I see. Uh, at 22, another movie I caught in theaters, Beast with Idris Elba. Very, very cool. Loved watching that movie. Uh, again, not a critical darling or anything, but extremely enjoyable. Um, 21, DC's League of Super Pets. Another theater watch. Um, and from here on in, they're mostly theater watches. I think that's a common, common mm-hmm. thing there. Um, Loved League of Super Pets. That was a very, very cute movie. Heartwarming as all hell. At 20, Bullet Train. Another mm-hmm. theater viewing. Uh, Brad Pitt and uh, the like. Joey King. Brian it Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor yeah. Johnson put that fucking movie on their back. Because uh, otherwise, kind of underwhelming. But it was still so wildly entertaining. I just didn't know what I was getting into. Coming into it, I didn't know that it would be like... Go into it like an MCU movie. It is an action comedy. I yeah. thought it was like, I thought it was like action drama is what I thought I was oh. getting into. Yeah, I watched and the trailer they, and it looked funny. Like it looked funny as hell to me. Mm-hmm. Is like what I was like gonna go into it. No, like. I did, I never even saw a trailer. I just heard oh, okay. Bullet Train, Brad Pitt, and I went into it and I was like, oh, okay, this should be cool. Oh. And, uh, it was <laughs> good. Like, strange, and I think yeah. I could rewatch it now and enjoy it a lot more than I did then. It would probably That's climb neat. a little bit. Okay. At 19, my lowest occurring MCU film, Thor Love and Thunder. Uh, we covered, okay. we did that, uh, did a whole episode on Love and Thunder. Very, very solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, at 18, Multiverse of Madness, another great MCU flick. Very enjoyable. Sam Raimi do- dominated. Uh, at 17, Werewolf by Night, the special. At 16, Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. All my MCU shit right there in a row, save for one, which <laughs> will come later. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. At 15, Turning Red. Fantastic new Pixar movie from this year. Went straight to Disney+, Plus, which was blasphemy. Should have gotten a theater release, um, I think. It is amazing. It was top 10 for a super long time, but the recent months just gave us some fucking bangers, and I had to, I had to, had to knock it down a little bit, which sucked, but it was very good. At 14, Elvis. Mm-hmm. Loved that movie. Super, super good. And I think Austin Butler is really good in the role. It's funny. You talk to old people. They hate that movie. You talk to young people. It gets them interested in Elvis, which I think was the goal of that movie. I think it was to appeal to a whole generation of new fans for Elvis. Mm. I don't think it was to go, oh, old people, you'll fucking love this. No. Yeah. <laughs> I understand why old people don't like it, in fact. Um Okay. 13, RRR. This is the, the only foreign film on my list. It is a, uh, Indian movie and it is, it was top five for a really long time. Damn. Okay. It is one of the most epic action adventures I've ever seen. Um, strongly, strongly recommend. It's so long, which is the only thing that makes it hard is that it's three hours and seven minutes of reading. Because it is a foreign okay. film. Uh, oh, okay. I see. Yeah, you have, a, subtitles. you have subtitles the whole time. And uh, that's... If you can get past that, 
I hmm. cannot recommend it enough. I watched because every I movie, one. every show, everything was subtitles. I read I, yeah, same, everything same. anyways. Like, it's my only way that I can consume. Like, I hate not having subtitles on, it's, actually. It kills me. So. It kills me. But this is where it got hard. The top 12. And... Yep, I think I'm going to have to go with it. At 12, I'm going to go with The Northman. Okay. The Viking epic from earlier this year, directed by Robert Eggers. Mm -hmm. Uh, It is basically the gladiator, but Viking, which is very, very cool. Very awesome idea for a story. One of the most, maybe the most beautiful movie I saw this year as far as visuals are concerned. It is gorgeous. That's what I was going to say. That's what I know going into it, just looking at the trailer and like image stills of the movie. It's, I mean, it looks beautiful. It's um, gorgeous. It so is, it is a beautiful. I'm movie. excited to watch that one eventually. Haven't seen it, but I'm excited to watch that one. And 10 and 11, this is where I get a little interchangeable. I have to make but the decision the one, though. It's tough. Yeah. But the I one know. that I think is going to have to fall on the outside just because critically, it's not quite as good fun to look at it is far and away a more fun movie and definitely more enjoyable will definitely make you happier and has a more entertaining cast 11 is where i'm gonna have to put unbearable weight of massive talent uh pedro pascal and nick cage are a dream duo in that dude i fucking Mm -hmm. love that movie um very meta, very awesome. I loved it, uh, and that that gets hard. You know, ten and eleven are almost interchangeable for me. So uh, that I'll, I'll throw that out there for you. But okay, okay. Terrible way to massive talent. Eleven, and that brings me to my top ten. So you go, you take it away. Oh, here, oh okay. Well, I have decided on the movies that I am going to exclude. Um, Morbius is comfortably at the bottom of my list. I guess movie wise now, um, one, two, three. I just want to make sure I have the number right. One, two, three, four, five, six. And specials are included because my, the specials are high up for me in my list because that's the thing. I've only seen like, yeah, like 13 movies, um, including Intergalactic now and The Atom Project. Um, because I, I believe I have to exclude three movies now. Um, and Intergalactic will be excluded as well. Um, was really fun. I love Kid Cudi to death. Um, I like his music a lot more. Um, is kind of, and the story was very cute. Um, it's just the, I I don't think he has the experience. I, if he got someone else to write it for him, um, or just, I I don't know. I feel like he would be better as just an actor. Um, yeah, the dialogue's so, a little hard in that yeah. one. I had a tough time getting past the literal words being spoken, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, this is." Um, so there's, there's my cut off. So yeah, there's, there's my cut off. So I have to cut off actually four movies, so um, and I believe, um, yeah, Morbius, Intergalactic, um, The Atom Project uh, will also be cut off. Um, I, I think that's kind of fair because I didn't even remember that I watched it in this year, and yeah. I think I literally saw it on the li- like, I basically looked up movies that came out in 2022, and then sp- went down everything that I saw, and I'm pretty sure I glossed over The Atom Project many times. It's like, an I think it's yeah. forgettable movie. Um, but that's the thing is that it, it was I like out of Ryan Reynolds like performances, like I was like. I don't actually hate you in this movie. You know, you're not just an actual douchebag. Like, there's an, I don't know, like, um, you still are playing the Ryan Reynolds stereotype completely. Um, and there's a kid version of you. But, um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, super fun, but I think I'll have to exclude it. And now here is my, um, final cut. Man, it's tough because. Critically, one of these is vastly better, but I just didn't enjoy um, the critically better one as much. Um, I think, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm comfortable with it. Um, I, yeah, Top Gun Maverick will be 
um, my Ooh. last one out. It was it, it was critically awesome, like it, in it. But I don't know. I kind of walked out like okay, like I, I like I walked out like I don't need another Top Gun anything. movie. I don't need another Top Gun movie. It was cool. I like jets. I'm, I'm studying aerospace engineering, so like I'm very interested in the subject. Um, but, like, it's a military movie, um, and, and, you know, there, there's only so much you can do with the story there of, here's a really hard mission, are they gonna do it or not? Oh, he's going with them, oh my god, and, oh, something happens in the mission that wasn't expected, how are they gonna get out of it? They get out of it, and it's like, okay, um... It was, it, but that's the thing. It, it was made very well. I think it's responsible um, for theatrical releases. Like it brought the movies back, and it brought a lot of people back into the movies. Um, I want to give the movie credit for that um, mm-hmm. because I think it was like it was a really big step in Hollywood being like, okay, we can fully release movies in theaters again and feel kind of comfortable. I think after Top Gun um, was kind of the the okay for yeah. everyone. Another um, important note heading into the top ten. Neither of us have seen Avatar Way of the Water yet. That's true, yes. Um, and honestly, I think it would only... Well, I don't want to say that. It could be. out. We have no idea. Apparently this, this could blow me out of the fucking water. No pun intended. I don't know. I'm ready for it. I'm, um, ready. I'm, ready. I'm only I, I'm excited knowing to that it. the visuals are great. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Um, so I've heard, that's, I've heard it's better than than one, which that's good. That's good to hear. What I would want. Um, but okay. that does bring us to our top ten. Here it is. You want me to start? Want me to kick it off? Yeah, I think. All yeah. right, at my ten, I've got the Banshees of Inisherin. Okay. This is starring Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson, along with Barry Keoghan and Carrie Condon. Uh little tale that takes place on an island off the coast of Ireland uh, made me cry, made me laugh uh, critically fucking beautiful to look at uh, it is a little, like, it's it's a slow story, there is no like action, it is a it is a dramedy between two homies and that is it, the whole story takes place over the course of like a few days one guy tells the other guy, I don't want to be your friend anymore, out of nowhere. And the rest of the movie is Colin Farrell going, why don't you want to be my friend? And they get to the heart of it. And they get to, like, it's a it's a very, wow. very moving story, okay. very funny story. Ends up being wildly intense. Um, can't recommend it enough. Banshees of Inna Sharon at 10. Okay, awesome. Um, my number 10, the one I was going back and forth, uh, debating on if it was going to be Top Gun Maverick, is actually Black Adam. Um, and I, it, and it is critically, like, the dialogue is rough. Um, they are just straight, like, ah, it, I feel like Dwayne Johnson wrote some of, like, a lot of the lines, sad, I don't know, it feels like Dwayne Johnson wrote some of the lines. He never once changes his delivery. No. And I guess they gave him a character where he didn't speak a word of English whatsoever. And, like, it would have made sense for him to, like, struggle at first and, like, struggle speaking. And, and, you know, it would have made sense for him to not speak as much. But then they didn't play on that at all. And he just spoke and understood everyone instantly. And he's a god and mad, whatever. But, like, they could have used that knowing that The Rock isn't good at dialogue. Like, they could have just used that. Um, but they didn't. Um, but overall, like, the action and... I um, time watching that movie. Freaking Dr. Fate. Oh, my God, that dude is super cool. Like, after watching the movie, I'm like... Whoa, that's a super cool hero that I didn't really know anything about. I've only seen like the the meme. I think that's him of like the um, and they be do gone it in the movie. or like you know yeah like they literally yeah and then like um like the beyond 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 and I'm like oh sick this character's super cool. Hawk man, Hawk man. 
Hawk Man. Yes, it's it's not sticking yet, but the character at least is sticking to my brain um, because that their whole dynamic. Um, them two was like probably my favorite part of the movie. Actually, and the was costume Hawkman design in that movie is fucking nuts. Oh. Like those costumes are clean. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. Like. Dwayne Johnson didn't do completely bad. Like, in the action, he was sick. And he is just a literal giant... Like, he's on steroids. Um, I'm of the... There's no way that that man is not on steroids. Um, I'm... There's just no... After the shot of seeing the back of him and his trap muscles, or whatever, his neck, like, literally being, like, another bicep, basically... I mean, he looks like a legitimate superhero, which was, like, really cool to actually, like, they had to make him smaller when they took his powers away. Like, they, it looked weird seeing Dwayne Johnson's face on he's a He's never been end. that small. He's never, no. Like, ever. So, like, it, it was strange. But, I don't know, the movie, it was fun. And, like, there were a few parts that actually made me laugh, and, um, I don't know, it, it was... I didn't expect anything going in, and I just kind of had a fun time. And, like, his power set is really cool, and how fast he is, and, like, the slowdown of whenever everyone comes and attacks him for the yeah. first time, and he busts he out the, the grenade in that guy's mountain, mouth. And, and, yeah, like, slowly taps the missile to, like, you know, go, and, like, showing how, like, slow he's experiencing everything and how easy it is, and then showing, after he's done, how fast everything happens, and, like, it's all over in a blink of an eye for everyone else. Um, yeah, it was, I don't know. That was super cool. Like they they had a re- a lot of really cool shots. Um, mm-hmm. So that's why it beat out Top Gun Maverick is because like I actually had like a decently fun time. In I was surprised. I guess instead of in Top Gun Maverick, I was like, okay, this is obviously where the story was going. Like um, mm-hmm. it was very obvious, but good. So um, interesting though. While it was your top ten and it was my twenty four. They were both our lowest ranking superhero yeah. movies besides Morbius. I'm Batman. pretty sure they go in the exact same order. Um, oh no, shit! Like That's it's funny. out of it's out of order in like numbers, obviously, but, but in progression, I'm pretty sure it's the exact same. Yeah, um, which yeah. is funny, exciting. So. But number nine for me is where I have Prey, the new Predator mm. flick from earlier oh. this year. Um, just an easy, compelling story. Amber Mid Thunder is a fucking revelation. I cannot wait to see her be in more stuff. An up and coming star from 2022. Just uh, probably my premier new new star. Like I loved, I loved her and her first role here. Amber Mid Thunder fucking rocked, and uh, it was an incredible Predator movie. Probably my favorite Predator movie. I haven't seen all of them, but from what I have seen, it's easily my favorite. Uh, just make more Predator movies where you drop a Predator into a different period of time. Mm. That fucking rock, like, they just dropped a Predator into Native America. Interesting. Boom, yes. deal with that. Drop them into fucking the Revolutionary War. I don't know. Dro- <laughs> drop them in, like, drop them into, like, 20s mob. Like, like... It can't be too far back, because he would just destroy everyone. Oh, is that's the thing. thing. Like, it's not like uh, I guess no. Native American underdog story is point. very yeah untechnological. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's Wait what's cool minute. about it. it out, and tech? that's why it pissed a lot of dude bros off that this oh. chick who can hunt defeats a predator. And does he still have all of his alien tech and all like everything? He's basically just the predator. He oh, doesn't have tech. the species just, of himself. He's like species. yeah, he's just he's just attacking. Um. Okay. He gets dropped off by a ship and the ship leaves. Like that's what's awesome about it is they just drop him in the middle of fucking nowhere so and they're sick. like do your thing. Uh that's what's okay. awesome about it. I loved that movie. That's the thing is that like a lot of the complaints that people have of movies, they don't take the actual thought of if that happened, would they actually like it better? Would you have liked to see the main character of the movie just get instantly killed by the predator? If, if if you if you are hating that it's not realistic enough and no way this woman defeats a predator watch you're, a documentary you're watching a movie about an unbelievable event that's what happens in every it's it's a movie you you literally say in real life like oh that could have only happened in a movie because 
It's unbelievable. That's the point of a movie. It's not like they went, this is based on true events. No. It's a fucking Predator film. Before you watch this movie, you must know that this movie is based 100% in science and fact and would happen if a Predator was released in the Native American times. Like, <laughs> is that is that There's what you no want? no way of knowing that. You know? Yeah, like, gee, like come on. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. Definitely one um, that I saw the trailer of and I gotta weird. check out. It takes place... Oh, it takes place in, like, the... I want to say the 1700s. Yeah, hmm. seventeen nineteen, the Great Plains. Okay, that sounds uh, it's fun. really cool. Like, yeah. and it's only an hour and a half. It's an easy watch. It's so good. I strongly recommend it. Okay. Um, I'm thinking I'm making a last minute switch here, which is surprising. It's only a switch of ninth and eighth place. Mm. Um, but I think I will declare this. It, this will go out of order from you. Um. This is where Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness will go for me. I like Uh, it. So, I think that, because, no, I'm staying by it. I'm staying by it. It was, it was really fun. Um, but coming off of Doctor Strange, I liked it more immediately than Thor Love and Thunder. But the more I sit on both of the movies, the more I'm disliking, like, I'm finding more things I dislike about Doctor Strange, and I'm finding more things that I like about Thor Love and Thunder. Oh, so they're okay. they're going, like, the opposite way, kind of. Um, not to say that Multiverse of Madness is, like, terrible and I'm hating it now. Um, I'm just finding that, like, Thor Love and Thunder was enjoyable and very fun and a blast. And I think I missed a few story elements um, and didn't really fully appreciate the gravity of what they were showing us on screen. Um in Multiverse of Madness, it was just a different kind of story. Um, I love seeing Wanda as um, the antagonist. Um, was super fun seeing the Scarlet Witch and just how brutal she could be. Um, just wiping out the Illuminati like it's nothing. Um, going to the, you know, uh, what's the temple called? M- Kamar Taj. Seeing her go in there and just white people right. actually oh how my scary God. Scene like the where she's elements. like trying to pry into fortify your minds whenever she's whenever she goes up fortify to that dude's ear minds. Yeah, oh, goes, no, the, she goes up to his ear and she goes run oh, oh my god i fucking love that yeah i might rewatch that movie tonight because of this discussion like and i like, love the, watching that movie. and the the thing that i think i have found that i dislike about it the most or the thing that I keep coming back to is how much it wasn't a Doctor Strange movie. Um, it was called Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. It was a story about the Scarlet Witch and America Chavez. Like it might have been better off just being called Multiverse of Madness. And, you know, I, I mean, I don't think um, I necessarily needed the movie to focus only on Doctor Strange. Like I think the more interesting story lies with America Chavez and the scarlet witch anyways um but it's just like when we're thinking of a you know a so like of the batman of spider-man the character in the title should be your favorite character it should be the yeah it should like it that is it it makes sense um and that doesn't follow suit with dr strange multiverse of madness i did that that's that's what I, I hold them basically on the same level. Doctor Strange, Monster of Madness, and Thor Love. I, they're basically the same to me. Does um, that make your eight Thor Love and Thunder? Yeah. Um, if it wasn't clear enough, yeah. Um, I guess. But that's... I don't know. I can't... I am deep in theory in Odin right now, so maybe that's why I you know made this last minute switch. I'm like... But it's made me realize that there was so much in that movie that I'm just like, wow, I gra- I just grazed over without even thinking of. Um, mm-hmm. And and I don't know. I think a lot of things that piss people off in that movie, like the kids being powered up um, by Thor and fighting against Gore. Like people are like, oh come on, what is this? And it's like if you're a kid in the theater while you're watching that, like that's that's so that fuck, awesome. That, fuck. that is so awesome. You have every demographic of kid right there, like. Mm. Every kid was represented pretty much there, and Heimdall's kid is one of them, you know? 
Yeah. Like, come on. Like, this, I don't know. That's, or was it his kid or was it like a, I think it was yeah, his, it was his, was kid. Was it his son? Yeah. Um, so, um, my, my single only beef with Thor Love and Thunder, because I think the character work is awesome. I think that it's so obvious that everyone on the film had such a fun time making it. Uh, I love watching the movie. It's super enjoyable. I just think it has a tough time balancing the tones it's putting across. Uh, it wants to be really funny, and it at points is very funny, but it also wants to be scary. It also wants to be devastatingly sad. Um, and when you drone over the comedy a little bit too much in the moments where that they could come through as very sad or kind of scary, mm. it loses its it, it loses steam for me a little bit. That but, is uh, fair. I, yeah, nevertheless, I, I think they better. handled the story work. The like story itself was a was very good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the shit out of it. That that is one thing that Doctor Strange does do better is they they knew the genre that they were kind of in. They do break away with you know the funny moments that Marvel throws in, you know the lines, whatever. But like they were more focused on like the the horror, the scary, the you know yeah. Wanda was scary the whole time. Things that Sam Raimi was like making funny in the Spider Man movies, you yeah. know, like uh, little little quips, little comments. Like that's just always been a part of the superhero genre, and that's okay. Like you know, like a uh, one of the things that people complain about with Thor: Love and Thunder is the fucking screaming goats. I am one of the motherfuckers who laughed every time one of those goats screamed. <laughs> yeah. It was so funny to me. I thought it was hilarious. Um, I mean, I'm easy though. Like I'm, I'm so easy. Yeah. Like, no, I, I don't know. I, Sure, it's annoying, but like they knew it was annoying. It wasn't like it wasn't like there was a ten minute unbroken goat screaming. That's like part of you what know. that's part of what makes that funny is that the gift that they give the guy who destroyed their temple is these screaming goats, and they're like, "You can't return them." Yeah. Oh, sorry. You cannot give these back to us. These are yours <laughs> now. Like they don't want them. That's what's funny is that like they have sicked Thor with these screaming goats because it's yeah. hilarious. And now they're freaking pulling like the equivalent of like <laughs> Santa's sleigh. They're like they're like Santa's re- reindeer, but Thor's. I love it. Screaming love goats it. pulling his Asgardian boat ship. Like you know that was sick. Um, I loved it. I loved it. But uh, hell yeah. If that's your eight, I'll go on to my eight. Mm-hmm. And sticking with you, MCU. This is my top ranking MCU. However, this is where I have Black Panther Wakanda forever. Um, I really, really enjoyed this movie. It was easily my favorite MCU movie of the year. Uh, I thought Namor mm-hmm. was handled fantastically. Shuri, Letitia Rice steps up in a big way. Uh, the way they handled that movie was just impressive. I didn't anticipate it. Um, and they did such a good fucking job. Um, Lupita Nyong'o, fantastic. Denai Gurira, electric. They just did such a good job with all the characters in that movie. The story maintains such a... Again, they maintained a tone so thoroughly that I can I can just appreciate it so much. And uh, mm. it being at eight is a... Uh, is yeah. a... It's just a testament to how good my top seven movies are. I love my top seven movies. All all of these movies yeah. I'm, I'm in love with. But uh, That's fair. I'd say my top six, I am like, I have nothing that I hate of this movie at all um, yeah, whatsoever. And I, yeah, so like all these movies are fantastic. That's why I'm at I love seven and above. Movie. Yeah. You know, my only my only gripe with Wakanda Forever, and I don't really even have like a massive gripe, is that I think they spent a little too t- too much time with uh, 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 the colonizer and Val. I think that yeah. you know, I think what we got done in those scenes, we could have done in about ten minutes less of screen time. That would have been better. Um, Man, I heard that it was supposed to like the movie um, before. You know, they had to rewrite it and everything it was supposed to be. Chadwick and his son out in like a um they had to go out on their own and they had to learn like he would be teaching his son how to survive on his own it would just be them two camping you know basically camping and surviving out in the woods of Wakanda um that'd have been fucking crazy I know so like that make that devastates and, me, and obviously that's the other thing that makes they it, that makes it they hard. had to rewrite the movie. Like that's the thing is, th- 
obviously at the end of Black Panther 1, this was not their plan for Black Panther 2. No. Um, and it's not that it shows that they had to rewrite the movie. It's that much more impressive it that they works had impeccably well as a sequel. And yeah. that's, it's incredible that they managed to pull that off. I can't believe it. Um, I will be talking about it later. Um, I figure. I figure. so I, it, just out of the movies I I've seen, it is, it's up there. It's in my top five. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it a little later. All right. So um, what's your seven? I guess my seven is, uh, the S- Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. Oh, um, fuck. Actually, yeah, I, I will put it above Thor Love and Thunder and Doctor Strange. Um, I, I have actually... Like, Harry Potter, the first ones are, like, obviously kids' movies, and, like, they're fun, and they're they're great, but, like, the last two movies, like, they actually get, like, pretty good. But then these Fantastic Beasts movies, I don't know. They tell a different story kind of every time. They're way more progressive. Um, and like Double Doors, yeah, Double Doors gay. Um, and that pisses a lot of people off. And it works so well for this movie. Like Double Door is in love with the main antagonist. Mm. Like, and it, it's the that's the same for all the Fantastic Beasts movies. And it was Johnny Depp. That's the that's the sad thing about this movie is that Johnny Depp was the antagonist, but he couldn't because of the Amber Heard and all the case drama that was going on. They pulled him out of the movie because of all the drama, um, and it was really sad because he dominated the role before in the previous two movies. Um, but the guy who replaced him absolutely carried the mantle, did such a good job. Um, it's a yeah, it's a Star um, Wars crossover there. That's dude Galen can. Urso. Dude can play a villain. Um, dude incredible. knows how to. Yeah, dude knows also how to play Doctor villain. Strange one as uh, Kaiselius. That's right. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, so uh, I have seen him as a villain. That's right. Yeah, Mads um, Mikkelsen's impressive. Yeah, I uh, I don't fuck with J.K. Rowling. I can't. Not I anymore. know. That's that. Yeah, she. That's the thing is that the Fantastic Beast is kind of like a. It's like it, it is. They're kind of separate. It is. It does feel separate from J.K. Rowling. Like it, it is still so her. But, like, it feels like they've broken away from, like, her, at, yeah. like, grasp. Um, you can tell with the Harry Potter movies that it's, like, I don't know. I Watching these movies, like, they're way more light in tone. Like, I don't know. They're very light in tone. I, they're actually, like, a lot better than I would have thought. Um, so, no, that's I don't surprising. Know, I, that's surprising. I wouldn't have anticipated that break in the top ten above a few of those. That's impressive. That's a well, testament. I think that's it, a... All it's right. not that's a, it's not anything critically amazing. It was just like it surprised me in the theater. I, I went into it thinking like, okay, I'm going in here. My girlfriend's the one who loves Harry Potter. This is her Marvel to her. This is her like Marvel release. You know, I'm dragging her to go see Doctor Strange and Thor and everything. Um, she doesn't really care about the Marvel universe, but like I'm I'm kind of into Harry Potter, so I'm like I'm okay with this anyways. And then right, I'm like, right. wow, I got out of the movie like. That was actually pretty good. Just I had a good time. Um, so yeah, um, oh yeah, All right. even better than the Marvel movies, which is surprising. But fair um, enough, fair enough. Yeah, I uh, my seven is also one I saw in theater, but this is one I saw alone in theater. Emily was not about to tag along because <laughs> she can't handle nothing scary. Um, seven is where I have nope. Uh, nope is. And this is why I said top seven. I love all my top seven movies. Uh, just epic. Just an epic action adventure. A little bit, like, not nearly as horror in tone as other Jordan Peele stuff. But scary enough um, to keep you on the edge of your seat. I was in a theater alone in IMAX. And that oh. was the way to experience this movie. Um I had this... such a great time watching this movie. It was, I mean, it was electric, man. This is, uh, Daniel Kaluuya is fantastic. Kiki Palmer is outstanding. I love Jordan Peele's direction. And, uh, I mean, it's an alien movie. The one that pisses me off the most. Into. This is the one that pisses me off the most. My favorite, like, I don't have many directors, many people behind the camera that I can point to. 
that I love right now. Jordan Peele, I love horror movies, and he's, like, one of the only people that I feel very comfortable with anything horror. Like, he has the right mindset when it comes to horror and the psychological twists. Mm -hmm. I have not seen a movie that he has made that I have even hated in the slightest. Um, I still haven't seen Candyman, which is insane. I have to see that, and Nope. Well, um, he produced Candyman. He didn't I know. write or I just, direct it. I need just everything that he's worked on. Just all so the I can monkey just pop production. Everything. Um, but, like, Us and Get Out, um, I love. I love those movies to death. And it, a bad it, miracle. it just pains me that I have not seen Nope. Um, I mean, Daniel Kaluuya is fucking incredible in it. And so is Kiki Palmer, but... Uh, mm. I, I love how he sticks the, with an actor. How he's just sticking with him. He's like, mm-hmm. we know it. each other. They know each other well. Um, they know what each other wants. Kaluuya and, turned down Wakanda Forever so he could film Nope. That's that's sick. Damn. That's really yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. He could he have been a copy. Yeah. Wow. I didn't think about how he was. He turned he, down yeah. the Marvel check. Wow. I mean, he's the lead in Nope. You would be a side character in Wakanda Forever. You know, the check probably evens out at some point. But, uh, yeah, I love mm. that movie. Can't recommend it enough. You gotta awesome. find a way to watch it at some point. Awesome, awesome. Um, here is where I have my first special. Um, yeah. and it's Werewolf by Night, uh, is oh. where, where it has for me. This is from here on comfortably. I don't have a single gripe with any of these. Mm. I love all of them. Um, and Werewolf by Night was, a special that um, kind of just was flowing under my radar. Like, I I remember hearing that it was going to come out, but then when it came out, like, the date didn't stick in my mind. And, like, I think you reminded me, like, hey, this came out. It was really good. You should, like, check it out. And, like, yeah. I watched it, and I'm like, okay, yeah. It was really, really good, and I loved it. Like, special, it was awesome. man. That's where it's at. Um, so, yeah. above It's above Multiverse of Madness. It's above Thor, Love, and Thunder. The specials are just... I don't know. I hope, I hope they... They realize how good they've done with these specials, and I think, like, literally, I don't think it's coincidence that after um, the holiday special, or it wasn't after the holiday special, or maybe it was after Werewolf by Night, like, Marvel comes out and says, we're rethinking our, you know, phase blah blah blah, and we're, we're going for more quality over quantity, and it's like, hmm, interesting. So, you know, maybe they are realizing the, the mistakes that, that they're going to make they realize that they're you know maybe they just follow the formula the straight up it's a little too steep um so you know I, I like i like that they're taking a step back as well um and really thinking about what they're doing uh, but werewolf by night it was awesome like i and it, it doesn't really affect the mcu in a grand way but we can bring some characters in like that's yep, a, like man thing elsa bloodstone yeah, so or it was a by night. Perf- like a perfect way to introduce different corners of the MCU that haven't really been touched on at all, and then a perfect, you know, you don't need a series to introduce this character, you don't need to tell someone, hey, watch six episodes, or ten, or twelve to introduce this character, mm. watch something that's 40 minutes long, have a good time while you do it, you'll get everything you want out of an origin, and then if they pop up in the next movie, you're like, oh, sick, I know a little bit more about them, you know? A baller. Um, so I think I think they have really something, or really something special with the, the specials. Wow. Um, I was trying to find a different word. Um, but yeah, uh, love the specials, and that's where Werewolf by Night falls for me. I think my number, yeah, six. Number six. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. All right. Then, uh, my six is Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, directed by Dean F- Fleischer, or Dean Fleischer Camp. Uh, this was the most adorable movie I've ever fucking seen in my life. It looks uh, so cute. It, it looks is so, so cute. cute. Had me fucking sobbing. I thought it was just going to be a little cute. Oh, this is so fun to watch sort of oh, thing. No. And then it ended up being an examination of like grief and loss. Oh. and a heartbreak and i'm like oh my god i did not know what i was coming into but in the best way possible um that shit oh. was so good it was so good i can't recommend it enough um i need to rewatch it it's one that i've only seen once it was the one time i saw it in theaters i saw it with emily and uh just I just fell in love with marcel the shell just uh just an adorable adorable character jenny slate voices that character and she's fantastic at it 
Um, another little stop motion animation sort of thing, which is awesome. I love, I love that sort of thing. And, uh, it was done. I thought for sure this would be a top five movie. The fact that this ended up being six or just a couple movies at the end of the year here that I could not comfortably say I liked less than Marcel the Shell with Shoes on. And, uh, okay. Wow. I didn't, I did not expect that. Um, because I knew that was a movie that came out this year. I remember watching the trailer and being like, oh, okay, that's freaking cute it as hell. It was fucking adorable, dude. I loved it. Yeah, would not expect it to be a, a top six movie. Um, Fantastic. That's nuts. Strongly recommend. Okay. Uh, I guess my number five, um, it is another special. It is the last special. Uh, this is where I have the Guardians, a holiday special for me. Um <laughs> And it's everything I said about World by Night, um, but with more characters that I already know, and it was Christmas, and we got two Christmas bangers, and we got an actual story that made me cry a couple times, legitimately. So, I don't know what Christmas is, but Christmas time is here. Oh my god. That it just. He does where you, ho, 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 ho. How do he do that? Out. Oh my how god. He do that, dude. It was. I don't know. That's nuts how that dude, That's that dude's clean. elbow, that dude's elbow, I don't know, I gotta practice that. I gotta, I don't, I don't even know how to play the guitar. But man, um, like the, the reveal, um, I guess it was in a deleted scene, but like Mantis being, uh, Quill's sister is really awesome. And what that could mean for the future, um, for predictions and stuff, got my, my brain going for sure. Um, seeing Quill's uh, blasters come from, um, you know, like, like it, he's the Grinch at first. And he, oh, hey, get all this out of here for you mushy tops on Terra. <laughs> what a Ravager get he earns, boy. Does that get yourself killed? You know, or like it's, it turns Christmas into just the absolute worst thing. But then he sees Quill's gift to him and he's like, uh, oh, this is kind of cool. I get I like it. This. And he gets him the most Yondu present ever. Gives Guns. him two blasters for his first, you know, Christmas present. And it's now, awesome. Where do I get this 11 year old child? Something that'll stick with him. Guns. Hey, they've stuck with him. He hasn't let them, he has not let them off his side for the entire time. And I, the Love second it. he opened the box and I saw it, tears. Like, I was, oh. okay, the, instantly the mantis like sister reveal um mantis, for me that was like the first time that the even best present like, i could have ever i could have ever asked for so corny oh but like I i'm was crying sobbing bro I'm crying. i was sobbing i'm crying whenever he, all the lights turn on and nebula flipped the big switch and he put his hands on his head and did like the home alone like <gasps> and i could see it i could see the comic panel literally in my head. Like, that's that's oh, the most yeah. comic shit, like, ever. I don't know. It was so perfect. So and sweet. that it, that got me to... It was, like, more of a happy cry there. Uh, more of just, like, a ho. Oh, like, oh, this is so, this is so, crisp, so heartwarming, well, so Christmassy. Christ, it's the spirit of Christmas. Um, and then the... Um, I think that was probably the only cries, was that and then the blasters. Um, yeah. Probably the only cries. But then, like, I don't know, seeing all the presents that... that uh, People, you know, uh, Rocket got Bucky's arm, and James Gunn was like, "No, Nebula just went and took that shit," um, which is awesome. You know, uh, Nebula went and took Bucky's arm. Okay, uh, whatever. Does he get it back? Does he get a new one? We don't know. We'll see. Um, Groot's little presents uh, that he made everybody. Um, the fractal one yeah. that kept you know going going deeper and deeper was awesome. Um, <laughs> Drax getting his um, uh, the soft elf plush you know decoration and, okay. and just hugging the crap out of mantis for it my was funny, awesome I, I i left my funny little man um you you kept see. your you Are kept your little gifts? man how could you possibly think this is a man oh yeah and oh we got so much of a deeper dive with drax and mantis mm, of just having yeah. them um oh my god just go off you and be on earth for a little bit actor yeah. Like she actually throws up a bit. Like, oh man, yeah, so good. Um, I don't know. And that was and James that Gunn. Your top five, right? It did. Yeah, that is my number five. 
Okay. Um, I can't wait for Guardians Three. That that's like all that did was it was like okay, I'm I'm ready for Guardians. I'm ready. 3. I'm ready. But uh, at my five, I made made a last minute change because I watched this movie once and I absolutely loved it. It moved me to tears. But the thing I had previously at my five, I've now watched three times in a matter of days. So it had to take the bump up to four. But uh, at five, I've got Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Okay. Uh, I loved this movie. It was so fucking adorable. It was heartbreaking. It was heart mending. It was everything I've wanted. Like there was that Pinocchio movie earlier in the year with like Tom Hanks and shit. Um, my girlfriend watched that. She said it was fucking terrible. So I was like, I'm I'm glad I sat that out. Okay. Um, this was the Pinocchio movie of the year. You got to watch this one. It was so fucking good. Uh, stop motion animated took a thousand days to film over a thousand days to film, which is nuts. The craft of it. Insane. Uh, the heart of it. Beautiful. Just a lovely, lovely take on the story of Pinocchio. And. I absolutely loved it. I don't have much else to say about it. You know, you know the story of Pinocchio. It's just a really good new mm-hmm. take on it, and I really loved watching it. Yeah, I gotta see that. Um, I don't know, just to see what a movie that takes that long to film looks like, you know, it just to off. see the craft it of off. it. It is visually fucking brilliant. It is a beautiful movie to look at. So, okay. Uh, well, my number four, and I think so, I don't think it's recency bias. It's not. But my number four is where I have Black Panther Wakanda Forever uh, for me. Um, and my top three, it like it, it was my top three before a couple of days ago. Mm. Um, and um, it's just been t- too much fun. Um, and I don't, I don't think it is recency bias. That, it, that's the thing. Sure. We'll get, I think, I think, I think we'll, we'll get there. But um, Wakanda Forever was, um, like, I loved how they handled um, Chadwick in the very beginning. They got it over with, um, you know, kind of like ripping the Band-Aid off, getting every, you know, the movie set up. Um, I think they handled it well, um, as well as they could have. Um, and then, like, Shuri um, is awesome. And, like, Riri Williams is one of my, like, uh, like... I can't wait to see what what she's gonna do, like with Ironheart, and be like the she's the next Iron Man. Like she she is filling that role, like in the new Avengers, like Young Avengers, whatever they're gonna call them. Um, like, and that's gonna be sick. Um, she's gonna be the Brainiac, the the Tinkerer, but mm-hmm. not um, not billionaire white Tony Stark, right? So, um, an actual you know, um, just I'm seeing so what what she can do is gonna be awesome. Um, she's already made the world's first vibranium detector, and everyone else in the world had no fucking clue how she did it, and she did it in a way that was ear like couldn't be reverse engineered because she used parts that were like just sourced from like it. That's that's just nuts. That like she basically just like put together a vibranium detector with like a box of scraps, basically. In a um, cave. So I can't wait to see. Uh, the future of Rio Williams and Shuri, like, and whatever comes of Wakanda, um, because it seems that Shuri does not want to take the throne and that she gave it up voluntarily. Um, and Baku coming in, just being like, you Shuri know, Shuri will not be joining us today. Ah, and, um, just, I, I think that's really cool. Um, I, I, I guarantee there's a conversation we haven't seen between them before she left. Oh, yeah. Um that 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 they definitely had to have that I can't I wait to see. Angela Bassett um, in that movie. Yeah, yeah. dude. First Man. MCU nomination for a Golden Globe, by the way. Oh, okay. Uh, never never an MCU nomination for a Golden Globe prior to Angela Bassett. Boom. So. Yeah, her speaking in the, the U- UN. whatever yeah, the UN building was really cool. Um like have have just absolutely dropping the mic and being like, oh, you you think that you can come into our lab still and when, when our protector is gone? Yeah, oh w- yeah, yeah. We're uh, gone. Whew. That was that was that kind of sucked though. 
like her actually being fired. Like it did, I guess it makes sense, you know? But like, I don't know. Like maybe just like a demotion or like not just like an outright. I guess she was mad. It was emotional. I, I don't know. But like, it's a grieving mother who's officially lost all her family. And she died and, like, couldn't... I bet, like, after the fact, she would have, like, been, like, okay. You know what? I made a mistake here, yeah. Yeah, so she didn't really get the chance to, so can't really gripe that much. Um, But it isn't, you know, this is in my top five. This is number four um, of my movies of the year. I absolutely loved it. And Namor, one of the best, like, MCU villains that there there is, that's, like, solo... Like, of the solo movies, holy shit. He's like one of the strongest solo movie villains. He's the there first is. villain we've had that I think actually has a real deal possibility of having his own solo movie. Like he can take he could take over the world. That dude is he is he for real in saying that I have a soldier for every single one of your blades of grass? Is that for real? You know, I think we haven't right. we haven't seen the full potential of what he has, and that might just be their capital. He might have fucking. You know, I don't know. The ocean's big. Hmm. Ocean, big. Big. And big um, ocean I think big. Uh, I'm interested to see the future of Namor. If that That's wing good. just grows back, I hope it grows back because I want him at full strength. Because um, right. he's just super cool. I thought the wings were really weird at first, but then seeing him use them, I was like, oh, okay, That's fun. actually sick. For like, sure. He's like walking on air. I love me some Namor, yeah. man. Yeah. That's a cool ass character. It's a cool ass character, but uh, Conor Forever is a great movie, man. Making a top five, that's my top ten, your top five. Mm-hmm. Makes perfect sense. Highest rated MCU thing on both of us. On both it of is. Parts. It is. So that uh, speaks volumes about it. But my number four, I suspect, is the same as your number three. Uh, mm-hmm. Glass Onion. Let's go, out. baby. Yes. I had a tough time declaring this over Pinocchio, but I've had, you know, I finished Pinocchio and I was like, that was awesome. I loved it. I watched Glass Onion and it's all I've been able to think about for like three days. So I'm, I'm like, okay, I love that movie. Ryan Johnson directed his ass off. The ensemble is incredible. The rewatches only make it better. Like it's, it's yeah. so enjoyable. It's, it's so a, enjoyable. It's a game of Clue come to life in way better ways, like way more complicated, crafted way better. Um, like the cast is insane. Just seeing all of these people, not as like the lead role of the movie, you know, like is nuts. Um, like I love. Movie. Fantastic. Oh my god. We ben watched is Benoit Blanc. Fuck yes. We watched the director's breakdown just of the scene of the doc. Mm. Um uh what's his name? Ryan Johnson. Johnson, thank you. Um yeah, Ryan Johnson um breaking down just the arrival scene and mm. a scene that I didn't really think about while watching the movie. Um but how just like he broke it down in such a way that was I don't know. It's insane what goes into making a movie like that, and I want to hear like his like thought process of what had to go into making the the story, like or, or just like I don't know, just like his thought process of like the movie in a grander scale. Um, yeah. I love to hear um, him talk about it because it was super interesting just hearing all the details about the movie. Um, I don't know. It was, like you get you get it's crazy that um, you get Kareem Abdul Jabbar um, and a Gosh, couple other people. Yeah, like pl- Sondheim playing Among Us, um, and, you know, like like the, yeah, we get it, like a game of Among Us. Daniel Craig playing Among Us with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and a few fucking, other people in a bathtub. And then boyfriend is Hugh Grant, who was a huge <laughs> boy, who was a huge fucking actor all unto himself. Yeah. Like, like I don't know, it's 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 insane what happens in the movie. Yeah. Popping up for one scene, it's just shooting him. Like, what was that? Just like to. Yeah, you're good. Just like I love how they handled COVID in the movie. It was oh, the yeah. it was the best COVID has ever been handled. Like with the masks, um, the how way every it was portrayed, how how it was like 
in that director's breakdown, he was like, oh, and like it, I feel like it's we're all kind of in a place where we can acknowledge that people's choice of mask wear is definitely indicative of who they are as people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Every mask matched their personality. Perfect. Hudson being a fucking lace mask. It doesn't make any sense. It was pure fashion. No. Yeah. No. And, and I think she, that that's the, she thought sweatshops, you know, that she was just the dumb blonde stereotype, you know, that it kind of the, the part of the movie that's kind of like, okay, like, her only plot points were her being dumb. Well, her plot points like, were her being dumb, but being put in a position of power to the point where she gets to make decisions that affect people's lives. I guess that's, that's better. It, that's a better way to look at it. Excruciatingly timely. Like, that's uh, fair. That is actually fair. Um, I guess because I was thinking more of all, along the lines of just like, ish. Like, man. And now that I think of her character, it was like, only whenever she's like because it's not just that she's dumb it's that she's ignorant it's not just dumb um at the beginning when she's like i just thought it was a general term for being cheap i didn't know it was an ethnic slur it was supposed to be a tribute to beyonce oh god oh it was a terrible thing to mistake speaking without thought for speaking the truth it's dumb. So it's you so think I'm dangerous? No, yeah. it's, yeah. Just it's just dumb. <laughs> oh, and how? Be- oh man! It, it, and we will this not w- do spoilers. This is the most recent movie here, though. Oh, so okay, that's fair. Um, I was about to probably jump into a spoiler there. Um, yeah. so good, good thing to stop me. Um, but no, I loved um, like the the twists it got better and better every time every you know like it's and that's the thing about that movie is on rewatch it is even better you know all the twists that come you see well, all the little things that happen the twists onto their performances like yeah oh yeah and they handled whoa that so like it was like i thought the movie i thought it was the last twist of the movie and then like they do another one and they're like oh okay now this is a lot now let's see how they wrap it up and like and then another one and you're like wait what and then it, like it reshapes everything like every time it's it's okay. it's an onion it's an onion you peel back the layers until you get to the center of it all baby it was beautiful oh, yeah. um that movie was so awesome um i and- keep coming back to the metaphor for the glass onion you peel back layer after layer. Fucking Daniel Craig as Benoit Blanc, man. It's fucking, it's fucking incredible. Uh, I'm hoping and, that franchise just goes and goes and goes and goes. And, and he said in that video, he said, every time it's going to be something different. It's going to be something completely different, which I love. Like, it maybe if, I don't know, is Daniel, like, I guess is, do you think the next cast is all completely new no one carries over or do you think there will be one care one little carryover from every movie i think daniel craig is just going to be the constant as ben you think Uh uh-huh yeah because he's in the first one he's in the second one because i was wondering if like if yeah i guess that's fair the detective the guy who solves the the murder mystery but i was wondering if like if they just don't like i don't know what if not I'm kind of hoping Benoit Blanc becomes a mantle character the way James Bond has. I want Benoit Blanc to become a just long running character that gets portrayed by a ton oh, of characters. Imagine um, they're just like 1900s, not, you know, knives out. Yeah. Um, you, can, you can change the time period. It's not Benoit Blanc, it's fucking Sherlock Holmes. Or it's instead. His, it's his fucking ancestor. Sherlock Cornelius Holmes is his ancestor. Cornelius that, Blanc. I guess like Sherlock Holmes is probably you can't just take that. Um actually. That's like very copyright. I don't know. That's that's a character that's probably, probably under some protection. Who owns Sherlock? Does someone own no, that's just it might wait be a public minute. domain at this point. Um Wait a minute. I'm kind of tripping. I'm. Um, he was never actually real, right? No. Or he was a fictitious character from the yes. start. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle concepted. Okay. Yeah, in an old ass book. 
Yes. So he has to be public domain by now. By now, yeah, I would think so. But regardless, I like the idea that it continues being the original the original characters, the original stories, you know. It's been proof that people do want original stories beyond like it's been dominating pop culture the last few weeks. Glass Onion. Like it's been yeah. massive. And it's a completely original original story, original movie. It is a franchise movie now that it's a sequel to the first knives out, but uh it's not like Keep it's a going. movie or anything like that, man. It's a uh, it's proof that people want that shit. Keep giving keep us them, that. Keep them going. Yeah, keep them going. I love um, it. because yeah, that, was, that was my four glass onion. Yeah, and that's that is my three. Um, I did not write say, but yeah, we had the the same movie there. So, um, Baller. for all the same reasons. Yeah, I'm not. I don't think I need to. We need to say anything more about it. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Go um, watch it. If you haven't it. been convinced, yeah, go watch it. But with that, I'll go to my three, which I think is your two, and that's uh, the Batman. Am I wrong? I'm wrong. The Batman is my three. It is top three, not uh, not breaking, not breaking the top two. It was until very recently, but uh, I loved the Batman. I loved Robert Pattinson's portrayal of it. I loved Matt Reeves' direction of it. Uh, I thought it was an incredible new take on that character, an incredible new take on Gotham. Um, we've talked about the Batman so much, uh, so I don't think I need to go into it a lot more, but. Uh, I loved it. I loved it easily. One of my favorite movies of the year and was top one for a very, for a very short period of time. Then was top two for a very long time. And then very recently got bumped down to top three. So I am conflicted. Very. Uh, My top two are, I believe, interchangeable. But I think if I saw one of them in the theater first, it would change things. That would be that would be different, yeah. And I think that's the only reason. Um, I don't know. I I, I really think they're interchangeable, um, though. Um, the the other movie I'm referring to is Everything Everywhere All at Once, and the Batman. For me, um, the Batman I saw in theaters when it came out. I loved it. Everything about it. I still love that movie. It's awesome. I don't have a single thing that I hate about that movie. Everything Everywhere All at Once. Probably one of my favorite movies of all time. And it's... It was un... The first watch I had was at home. It was not in theaters. Hmm. But at home, my mind was blown. I had to watch it again. Immediately. Um, Like, it... That movie it will remain one of my favorite movies. I don't for I don't know God how long. If there are better movies that come out that are better, holy shit! Um, but it's going to be tough to beat that movie. Um, so really, they're interchangeable for me on one and two. I only give Batman the extra nod because I did see it in theaters, and that was so fucking awesome. That was in a, theaters. I- I watched it five times. I bought five tickets to go see that movie. Me too. Um, it was the best theater experience I had of the year, even even with everything everywhere all at once. You know, I thought that was it was beautiful to have seen it in theater, and I love it. But uh, as far as the and it's not a drop off in quality. Theater to at home. I am so mm. fucking thankful I saw the Batman in theater. Because I don't think I'd like it as much if I just watched it at home. Um, That's fair. Yeah. Like, it was truly the way that the sound design worked. The the Like, the big screen is just the way to see movies, man. You gotta go to the theater to watch a movie. And the Batman was easily my favorite theater experience this year. Um, It was not my favorite movie. And I do have two more. But, uh... And one of them's been heavily talked about. So uh, if you're uh, if you're top two mm-hmm. or everything everywhere all at once in the Batman, I think I can rattle off my top two to follow as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, at two, I'll talk about this for a second. Is the Fablemans, directed by Steven Spielberg? Uh, it is the second best family drama of the year, behind Everything Everywhere All at Once, which is my one. Uh, it is easily the best coming of age movie of the year, though. It was 
incredibly personal, almost to the point where I can't believe Steven Spielberg made it. It is no doubt well, based on Steven Spielberg's life. It is it is about Steven Spielberg. It is an autobiography. Um, okay. And so this it is like is beautiful. Like, so this is like the equivalent of George Lucas's. Um, Oh, is it American, American graffiti? graffiti? Yeah, like because it's basically his life. You, I, I gotta, I gotta assume he simped over a girl over a phone call one time. I gotta assume <laughs> he tried to buy alcohol. You know, you know, I gotta assume that's just his coming There's of age. Few, like, there are a few things like that. No, but uh, the Fablemans is much more dramatic, much more, uh, much better. If we're being okay. for real, um, it takes place over a much grander span of time than hmm. American Graffiti's one night. Um, the Fablemans covers years of Spielberg's life, of his childhood. Um, it's about how he fell in love with filmmaking and what led him down that path. And uh, just the power of movies, man. It's so fucking good. I can't recommend it enough. This movie made me cry so hard. Probably the second most I cried in a movie this year. And that's behind everything, everywhere, all at once. Which had to be my one because I Ooh. regard that as my favorite movie of all time. And I have no doubt about that. Um, I love that movie. And uh, so the last hour of it, man, that just keeps me sobbing. I do not stop crying for the last hour. I've only watched it four times, four or five. And every time I've sobbed every time mm -hmm. guaranteed. Um, and I don't think it, it'll, I wonder if there will ever be a watch where I don't cry. That'll be hard. that, that's a challenge. The day the day I don't cry watching everything everywhere all at once is the day I died. Yeah. I think I think that's that's fair to say. Um man, yeah, this it, it I mean, if I'm being for real, everything like the Batman as of right now, like I do put it up there with like one of the, you know, that's a top 5 movies that, I, that I've ever seen. Yeah, of all time too, but like Everything everywhere all at once is, is it's just the story is so much you know close knit it, it's like a family it, it's more more it's so much more meaningful and it's such a crazy movie that's never been made before it's so unique um it's it's gonna take a while for anything to to come close to that yeah like I don't know if it's recency bias but Three of my top five, what I consider my favorite movies ever, if you go to my letterbox, came out in 2022. They're everything, every world at once. At one, The Fablemans at three, The Batman at five. The only other two in there are Raiders of the Lost Ark and The Godfather. Like, that's how highly I regard these movies. It, like, they are some of the best movies I've ever watched in my fucking life, dude. I love them so much. Uh, I mean, I guess that's how it happens. Whenever you ask someone, like your parents, what's your favorite movie? Usually it's around, you know, they have a few that they'll list off of their childhood, um, whenever they were growing up or before they were even born. And then they have the ones where they were probably around our age whenever they were coming out. So I think, yeah, I don't know. This is, I don't know. I think we're also no, getting that's to crazy. The point. That's crazy. I asked my dad what his favorite movie is, and he'll tell me Gladiator. Would have been 23 Damn. when that came out, That's which is kind of nuts that you say that. That's weird. Whoa. When did 2006? Oh, that's weird. Okay. Yeah. This theory holds a little too strong, uh, for, for like my parents as well. Um, doing the math on their age. Okay. Um, insane. So maybe insane. we're we're in our our prime era prime of movie watching movies. Era, we're also, I think, just becoming better movie watchers. Um, that is part of it. I don't belong to, you know, a group of people that will just not watch a movie or not enjoy a movie because, like, politically, I don't agree with what's going on or <laughs> something. You know, Most like insane reason to not like a movie. Um, um, I go to the movies to escape all of that. Yeah. Uh, that that's the point, you know. That's I'm I'm going to the movie to put my brain in that world because that's what whoever makes whoever's making it that's what they want. Their mm. their vision. I think that's why um, 
you said, you know, that the best way to experience a movie is at the theater. Whenever they're making a movie, they're that's what they're imagining, you know, that yeah, that's what they're imagining it's going to be seen. That is the ideal situation for them, you know, so I'd say it does make sense. Um Nah, man. And, the, and that's yeah, that's the only reason Batman's above everything ever once. But over like the all time list, everything ever all at once is just it's it's, it's the goaded movie right now. Yeah. Uh, let's run down that top ten one more time. I'm gonna go first. I got everything everywhere all at once at one. The Fablemans at two. The Batman at three. Glass Onion at four. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio at five, Marcel the Shell with shoes on at six, Nope at seven, Wakanda Forever at eight, Prey at nine, and the Banshees of Inisharan at ten. I have the Batman at one, Everything Everywhere All at Once at two, Glass Onion, a Knives or er, Knives Out at four, Black Panther Wakanda Forever at five. No, sorry. Uh, Glass Onion at 3, and Black Panther, Wakanda Forever at 4. Guardians of the Galaxy, Holiday Special at 5. Werewolf by Night at 6. I think I will make a last-minute switch here. Um, It was a little ridiculous of me to put Secrets of Dumbledore above Multiverse of Madness and Thor Love and Thunder, um, because I really love Marvel a lot, and those movies actually are good, too. Mm. And I love Marvel, and I had a blast while watching them. I kind of hold all three of them on the same level, though, if I'm being for real. Right. Um, they're all pretty equivalent. So um, I think I will... Um, my order will be Thor, Love, and Thunder, though, first, and then Multiverse of Madness, and then Secrets of Dumbledore. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that will that will be my um, 8, 9, 10 all right. um, there. So, yeah. There is the list, I believe. Yeah, that that is it. Because then, no, Black Adam would then Black Adam round Adam. off the list. Yes, that's for oh, sure. That's that last spot. No, yeah, yeah. 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 That, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, they'll no, stay I ten. That. Sorry, I dig that. Um, uh, but yeah. with that, we conclude the year and we conclude this episode of the Penny Bloom Podcast. If you would head to Patreon dot com slash Penny Bloom Pod, where you'll find over fifty hours of exclusive content, including all sorts of uh, comic book pull lists, movie reviews, book reviews, all that shit over there. For three bucks a month, you can financially support the podcast, which is huge because it costs me money and I don't make any off of it. So that'd be a huge help. Uh, if you would, head to Twitter, follow at Penny Bloom Pod, follow on Instagram at Penny Bloom Podcast. Remember to leave a five-star rate and review wherever you are listening. Another huge help for us. Uh, I was Colton Robertson. I was joined by Joseph George. Thank you very much, homie. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it's always a pleasure to have you. Remember, peace, love, and bloom, and stay in the movie theater all 2023, baby. Go catch some movies on the big screen. That's the way to do it. Go back. Watch everything everywhere all at once. Watch The Fablemans. Watch Glass Onion. Watch all this shit. It's all good. Deuces.